हेलो वेलकम फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज मोसिन दिस इज अ कोर्स ऑन ट्रांसफर लर्निंग ट्रांसफर लर्निंग इज आल्सो समटाइम कॉल्स अ डीप लर्निंग ऑन हाई स्टीरॉइड इट्स लाइक डीप लर्निंग हैज टेकन अ स्टीरॉइड इट्स अ नेक्स्ट फ्रंटियर इन डीप लर्निंग अलोंग विथ री एनफोर्समेंट लर्निंग and i would like to also call it a course which is called don't be hero in deep learning the brief outline of this course is what are the motivation behind learning transfer learning why is what is transfer learning why transfer learning gain so much momentum what are the different types of transfer learning that we can do to solve problems with limited resources with limited data sets with limited computational power the model used for transfer learning in deep learning and various models available by google stanford microsoft which are these models we will see that also and in an implementation aspects we will see a google's model first as which is called tensor flow for poets the name is very uh, important here it's for poets tensor flow for poets because poet doesn't have any idea on deep learning still as a poet as a name layman as a novice user of deep learning still you can do and very high accurate you can achieve very high accuracy in your models due to transfer learning we'll implement basic cnn model convolutional neural network model and we'll see its accuracy then we will apply the same data set with on our different model which is transfer learning and we'll see how drastic the accuracy is increasing with little training and little computational power and finally we'll compare the results also in short time i'm also planning to launch a course on transfer learning 2 it's like 2.0 where i'll be discussing in more detail image classification object detection and one shot learning using transfer learning so i'll be using more models there and hope you will enjoy this course also which is transfer learning 1.0 thank you very much hi and welcome to our course on i am not hero transfer learning the other name is deep learning on high steroid in this section i'll be discussing on a topic which is called let's be poet before continuing on this topic i hope you have installed python anaconda and in anaconda you might have installed a tensor flow and keras also because we are going to use this in this course if you have not installed this please do install them and if you are facing any problems regarding installation please send me a query i'll be ready to reply you as you are in this course i assume you have a basic knowledge of machine learning and deep learning what is a classification and why this title i have given to this section that is let's be poet because to jump start anything in deep learning it's always a challenging because if you don't have uh, enough understanding of deep learning aspects you might face a problems like there are so many models to choose which model i should opt 
if you have a specific data set on which you are working then whether that data set has enough data enough features available in this data to achieve your task and where to train this do we have enough resources available like nvidia gpus or are you going to run it on google colab and if doing all this whether you will get a proper result or not so to overcoming this problem google has introduced a concept which is called tensorflow for poets the title is tensorflow for poets and this scripts the combination of scripts are designed keeping in mind that if a poet is also doing a machine learning means you don't have any idea on machine learning or deep learning still you will be able to train your model and you will be able to get a decent accuracy so without jumping into without discussing further let's jump into this technical aspect the coding aspects of let's be poet so basically three things that you will need so you can download these three things from the resource section of the video that is a data set the data set is a flower data set and it is having a 500 images for each class there are 100 images that is there are five flowers daisy and it has an 100 images if you see inside it you can see this 100 images are there and these are various photos of daisy flower dandelion again 100 pictures roses and this data set is designed uh, in a such a way that it covers it try to covers as many different categories of roses in different backgrounds and all aspects i have reduced this data set to having each row each flower which is 100 uh, data but actually this data set is very big and it is having in each of this class we have more than 500 datas that is in daisy there are actually if you search on net flower photo data set in daisy you will get 633 images in dandelion you will get 898 images in roses you will get 641 in sunflower you will get nearly 700 images but i have deleted some files i have kept only 100 files to make my machine learning model train faster in, in tulip also we have 100 images and these are all tulip flowers again in tulip also we have nearly 800 images original data set i have reduced it each containing 100 and our aim is to classify means first i'll train this on this five flowers and in future if i give any flower it should be able to recognize which flower it is and that is our aim so the first thing that we need is a data set so we have a flower data set second thing is a tensor flow for poets which has been given by google so you can download it from zip section actually it has a few scripts but we will be interested in two main scripts that is retraining the our model and we will be also uh, interested in label image which is for testing purpose so if we give an image it will say it will label that image whether it's a daisy flower it's a dandelion it's truly a pitch flower so we are basically interested in this too if you want to know more about this uh, there is a site which you can visit which is tensorflow for poets of google so you have to extract you you have to unzip this folder also 
And the third thing that I'm going to tell you is how to run the scripts. So we will have the script in the poet script Python code in the available in this. Actually, the retrain py retrain.py file is to retrain our model on our data set, which is of our data set. And label image is to check what is the accuracy of the model. So hope you have under, uh, downloaded this and understood what are the three things in this section that we are going to discuss. Thank you very much. Hi. Let's continue our course. In this section, I'll be discussing a tensor for, for poets. Uh, if you follow the link given in the resources, that is code labs and tensor for, for poets, you'll get this interface. It's saying that this, this is deprecated, this code lab is deprecated, but uh, for understanding the transfer learning, this is the first baby steps that you should take. And that's why I'm explaining this. So in this section, what you are going to learn is it's a TensorFlow for poets. It's classifying basically the flowers into five categories. That is daisy, sunflower, dandelion, roses, and tulips. The data set is already given in the resources, so you don't need to download it. And we are going to use a pre-trained model, ImageNet. Okay, so we are going to use a model training on ImageNet and it has 1000 classes initially. Our, we have only five classes. So to do the setups, you need to install the TensorFlow. If you follow this, it's ob uh, absolutely right. Uh, but the, the better option is uh, you install it by your own, uh, looking at the various resources. The third thing that you, uh, the second thing after installing a TensorFlow, you need a image data set. This is also provided by me into the resource sections of the Udemy in the same lecture section. So again, you don't need to download it. As I have discussed it, that this tra training data set is larger. It has so many images of each of these classes. I have restricted it in to the 100 images of each class. Now, this is an important section that is training or retraining of the network. So what we are going to use is we, we are going to retrain a mobile net model. You can retrain it in on any models that you have downloaded. But right now we will looking at this. The mobile net is configurable in two ways. That is the input image can be of 128 cross 128, 160 cross 160. It can be 224 cross 224 also. And the, the models that you can use is 1.0.75.5.25. 0 0 so in this we will, go, we will be using it 220 cross uh, 224 cross 224 image and 0.5 uh, relative size model. So this is our architecture. You will see it. Uh, I'll, I'll show you these parameters are used in somewhere uh, when running the code. The other, other model, the, this is an optional, the, the performance of mobile net where it resides. So this is a various mobile net performance on the, and it's showing the top one accuracy. That is, if you are directly giving a one class, that is top one accuracy. That is, if you are giving an image of a rose and it gives that it's a rose, then it's a or it only suggests one classes, then it's called top one accuracy. If, if it suggests five classes, that is 20% it looks like this, 30% it looks like this, and it's called top five accuracy. And you can see the BGG outperforms in uh, when, when the number of uh, iterations are doing, done more and the accuracy is keep on increasing. Uh, how to run, we'll see it uh, in the later section, but here you can see it's saying that you have to start TensorFlow board, boards, TensorFlow uh, boards, and uh, this is a script retrain, which will be using it. So this is the command that you have to fire. This is what I was discussing. That is the architecture that we are going to use is the above. 
0.5 size architecture this mobile net 0.5 resize architecture and the image size is given uh, and the number of steps that are going to take is 500 now once you do this okay there is an important thing that you should know is there is something called bottleneck you, uh, when you are doing a training, read, uh, when you are doing any transfer learning model, you will find it uh, bottleneck values that are calculated. So the, the first phase analyze all the images on the disk. So here, this is an ImageNet stack model. It is having so many layers. If I zoom it, you, you might have an idea. So here you can see it's have convolutional layer, convolutional layer, convolutional layer. It has pooling layer and then again convolutional layers. So this image net model are made up of many layers stacked on top of each other. The, the, now what is this is that these layers are pre-trained and it's already having a very valuable information of finding and summarizing information to classify a specific class. It has 1000 classes. So while all the previous layers are retrained, they're already trained states. So this is what you can say, accuracy is checking. This, this is a graph. So in the above figure, the node labeled soft max this. On the left side is the output layer of the original model. Original model is 1000 classes, while all the node on the right are were added by the retraining script. So this is our retraining script. This is what we will, so here you have a bottleneck. It keeps on counting the information. So what is a bottleneck? So it's not something which, which is slow down in the network. It's not used to imply that the layer is slowing down. Rather, we use the term bottleneck because its representation is much more compact than the main body of the network. So it's representation features. It's a features. So every image is reused multiple times during training. Calculate the layers behind bottleneck for each images. So it's calculating the bottleneck for each images. Uh, and that takes a significant amount of attack because that bottleneck is a compact feature extraction. And this compact feature extraction will be used to classify it. Since those lay two low, lower layers of the network are not being modified, their outputs can be cached and reused. So we'll reuse, reuse this. So if you retrain it, you don't need to again count the bottleneck values, rather only the values in the network will be adjusted. This we are not discussing. Uh, it's discussing a training accuracy. Training accuracy is when, when the model is trained, uh, the, valid, uh, the test images are given and that will, is giving you the training accuracy. And once the model is fully trained, we check the Validation accuracy that is on randomly chosen selected images, which is not part of the training model are given. And this is a very important section, which gives that an unknown data, how your network will behave. So here you can see the training accuracy is higher and the validation accuracy is going lower sometimes. So when you retrain it, uh, in this section, there are all labels given for the models. And in this section, the, the graph and the network of the final layer retraining are given. We'll see this label image.py file, label underscore image pi file, which is used to test our model. That we'll see in further section. Once we train our model, we can change some of the data that is if you can decrease the learning rate, if you decrease the learning rate, your network will be slow, but your, your uh, accuracy may increase. So if you specify a small learning rate, the training will take longer, but overall precision might increase. Higher value of learning rate, like one, would train faster, but typically reduce the precision. We'll see this example also. And how we will train it for our, our own data, we'll see that also in the examples. So this is what the TensorFlow for Poets website is telling us.
hi now let's jump into the execution of tensorflow for poets so open the command prompt let's say the command prompt is open and I, 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 right now i'm at the directory c user mosins uh, you if you have downloaded the resource files uh, the three three resource files which we have discussed that is the uh, tensorflow for poets data sets and the txt file having the execution script again three things uh, tensorflow for poets library the, the package second a data set flower data set and the third the script now let's say i have put this into on the desktop so i'll go on desktop On desktop, I have extracted it in uh, the TensorFlow for Poets into TensorFlow for Poets, TensorFlow for Poets to master. This is where I have extracted the TensorFlow for Poets. In this, there is a folder called script. So I'm going into the script section. And from the txt file, you can download, uh, you can copy the code which you wanted to run. So, so let's say I'm going into this section and copying it and I'm testing it. Now, so what this is, is there is a file retrain.py which we are going to use. We are running this with Python. We want our bottleneck of each images should be stored in tf files slash bottlenecks folder. Right now we want to do only 10 training steps. The model directory, the model is stored into tf underscore models. This is the models. The summary will be stored here. The train graph will be stored over here. The labels retrain label.txt is at this location. This is my architecture that we are using 0.50 and 220 cro 224 cross 224 image. So this is the model that I'm using. And my image directory, the flowers, I have stored it into f colon slash flowers photos 500. So here is the name of the folder where, where your flowers are there. So if your flowers is at, uh, uh, at the current directory, you, you can directly give flower photo at 500. I have put it for conveniency, for ease of access, I have put it into draw directly the fly, flower underscore photos 500. And the learning rate that I'm using is, let's say, 0 0.001. So I'm using, uh, I, I, let's say, I'm doing less faster learning, 0 0.1 only. Now, if I click it, now bottleneck files are created. You can see for each images, the bottleneck files are created and stored it. We'll see this also where these files are stored. So this, this you can say a features of each of this image file for better classification. It's taking each of right now it's working on dandelion. Now it's working on roses folder. Then it will work on tulips maybe. Sunflowers, PQRS and then it will be going for tulips. Depending on number of iterations, uh, it's doing this. Once the bottlenecks are calculated, it will go into the training mode. So bottlenecks are created. You can see this. We have given 10 uh, steps. So it's showing it after every 10 steps. So it's uh, on zero. The accuracy was 65. Cross entry was seven. Then at nine, the accuracy is reduced to 61 and cross entropy is 25. Entropy has increased. And at final, you can see the test accuracy is at some 53 percentage. The final accuracy is 53 percentage. Now, let's see how this model behaves on unknown files. So I have also given in the resource section, the test images files where I have stored some images downloaded from net. And now I'll running it, the label image pi file. So here you can see a Python. I'm running the label underscore image dot pi file. I'm using this graph which we have stored above and the image that I want to classify 
what this image is. So this is actually a dandelion image and I'm checking whether what is the accuracy it's giving. So you can see with 100%, this is called a top 5 accuracy. So top 5 accuracy is showing the 5 top, top 5 classes in this cases. So it's with 100% accuracy, it's saying that it's a dandelion. Now let's see, I, I'm giving a rose. I'll show you all this file. So the rose, if I check it, it's again saying with 100% it's a rose. Now I have taken one extreme case of the rose, which is a black rose and stored in a rose one file. So if I run it, Again, it's saying it's a rose. Now, if I give some other images, let's say if I'm giving an image of Obama. So it's saying that with 53% accuracy, it's saying it's a daisy flower. And with 46% accuracy, it's saying rose. Because we have trained our model on this five classes. So whatever image we give, if, if I, even if I give you an image of a cat, then also it will try to find that let's see dog image there was some error I, I think the files are not there let me see okay my photo is also there let's say I'm giving my photo so if I give my photo in the test images let's say I, I am 100% rose now, the accuracy is only 53%. So if you want to increase the accuracy and more precisely classify the roses properly, you have to increase the speed. So let's say I'm, I'm changing the number of training steps to 50 and learning rate also I'm increasing, uh, decreasing. So it will be slow, but the calculation, uh, but the accuracy will be more. So here you can see the steps are increased to 50 and the learning rate is now 001.001. Now, bottlenecks are already created, so it will not recreate it. But you can see now accuracy is increasing gradually and it's now reached to 84%. If you take more images, if you take original flower photo data sets, you will have accuracy beyond 90 to 93 percent. So now let's see again some more images and how it behaves with the checking. So this is again I'm checking the labels. Again it was dandelion 100 percent. So this time also it should give an 100 percent dandelion but it's now it's saying with 97 percent accuracy because it has learned more features. So but still it's 97 percent it's dandelion. If I say, what about the rose? So you can see it's 68% it's saying it's rose and 23% it's saying it's a tulip. So your, your question is, even the accuracy has increased, the top five accuracy has decreased. Because now it's extracting more features of each of this feature. So you can, in the previous, you can say it's over trained model. Now this is actually the trained model. So now here you can see the rose one image is saying that it's 40% rose, 30% tulips. And now you have to put some threshold. The threshold is you can say that if my accuracy is my score is more than 80 percent then and then only i'll say that it's a rose if it's less than 80 percent i'll not classify this as a rose and i'll not detect it so this is a retraining on daisy flowers now it's th this data set is already there now let's say you have your own data sets you have 10 images of your photo, 10 images of your father's photo, 10 images of your friends and your wives and son. And then what you want to do is you want to train it. So simply what you have to do is change the training folder. 
let's say now I have one more data set. This, is, this data set is also available in resource section. Its name is four classes. Its name is four classes. So now here you can see my directory I'm changing to four classes. This four classes has images of cards, images of dogs, images of human and images of roses. So, so the four classes are cat, dog, human and horse. Now let's see how it does. So it, it will again check, count the bottlenecks. Uh, but I have already trained it, so it, it's not counting it again. It's just uh, bottleneck is already there, it's saying. I'll show you where these bottlenecks are in the next video. And you, you can see the accuracy is 100%. It's, you, sometimes you can say it's an overfit. Now let's say, in the previous example, even though I gave an Obama, it was saying it's a dandelion. And if it's like giving my photo, it was giving it's a rose 100%. Now, if I give a dandelion, it says with 80% that it's a horse because it's learned to identify these four classes only. If I give an Obama photo now, so it's 93% it's a human. And even if, if, if I give my photo, my photo is slightly different way I have shoot it. So it might give a different class here. So it's saying 42% I am cat and 40% I am human because the entire pose is not there, only part of my face is there. And 16% it's saying it's dog. If I give horse, let's say I'm giving cat 2. The error was that there is no image of cat. It's actually stored as cat 2. So if I give a cat 2, it's 99% accuracy. It's saying cat. If I give a leopard photo, it's with 96% accuracy. It's saying it's a horse. So this is a retraining on the models, retrain model, train model, retrained on two different set of data sets. You can have your own data set. Please try this. Take few photos of yours. The, the more photos, the more accurate it is because it, it learns more the features of the data. So here we are concluding our session. Thank you very much. Hi. Let's continue our section that is TensorFlow for Poets. In this section, I'll be uh, showing you the script files, the location of the script files, and the other data that has been stored. So let's see. The script files is, as I said, two important files is retrain.py. This uh, will be running. And the second is label underscore image. This is to test our future images into the specific class. The TF underscore files folder where we will be storing our data. So the models which we have already downloaded is this. So you can see it's a model mobile net 0.5 resize model and 224 cross 224 cross image model. And this is where uh, the labels are there. So actual image net is trained on this. Uh, so if it's zero, it's identifies background. If it's giving nine, so it's having hand. So these are the various classes, house, finch, and uh, likewise, snowbird is 14, water is ozel. What this 21 is, actually, the, when train model learns, it gives class as 21, and then it's decoded into, for us, for easy output, it says that it's a water. For 22, it's saying it's class, and likewise, you can see there are 1,000, Classes. So this is an ImageNet model, original classes. This classes values are stored. Now we will retrain in on our five data, the five class data set. So now we will have only five labels, dandelion, tulip, rose, sunflowers, and likewise. And in another example, we will have only four classes. That is cat, human, dog, and a horse. This is original classes. And 
th th this is where the graphs are stored. In the bottlenecks files, you can see we, we have trained initially on daisy, dandelion, and roses, sunflowers, and tulip. This is four classes. And for other data set, we, we use the other four classes that is cat, dog, horse, and humans. So for each of this, the, the class, uh, for each image of, of the horse is the bottleneck is calculated. Similarly for daisy, you can see 100 images are there and for that 100 uh, values, uh, bottleneck values are there. And this is the uh, weights internally used to classify the data set. And this is our labels. So in each, the, the last model which we trained has this five, uh, four classes. So that's why this retrained labels are four. If we, re if we retrained it on flower images, here you will have this daisy, dandelion, and then sunflower, tulips, and rose. This five classes will be there. The, the retrained graph is stored over here. The summaries is stored in this, the name, but whatever name we have given, the training and the validation values are here. So this is about the TensorFlow for Poets structure. Okay. It can also run on iOS and it can also run on mobile devices. So you can see uh, a net further resources for how to run it on the mobile. Thank you very much. Hope you understand and hope you like this session also. Hello, and let's continue our course on transfer learning. The three main motivation for going for transfer learning is it's hell to the maths means when you go for any deep learning course, you will find a lot of maths involved in it. And a person got bogged down and he left in between because he don't like maths that much. And there is a very good uh, saying of Yann LeCun that machine learning has two broad aspects. That is research and applied. So transfer learning is basically on applied side. The second motivation is industry is not doing everything from zero every time. When they took something from the shelf and they try to go for it to the next level. Even it's well said that if you want to build a Mercedes, you cannot create tires and engines from scratch. Rather, you have to take something which is already built. And the third is, the, this is the great motivation is, you are not alone to think on this. The industry giants are using it and they are using the already done things for, for their purposes. So the three main motivation, hell no maths, not everything from zero and you are not alone to think on it that transfer learning is useful. So the Andrej Karpati is well known guy in the field of deep learning and he said that it's good to be not to be hero so you don't have to try to be an hero and here hero means understanding every aspects of maths and bringing up a new model which can revolutionize the deep learning but we, we are not here to revolutionize deep learning rather we are we want to use something which is already built and it found to be good. So let's see what the human does. So when you teach your kid to stack the plates, to stack the plates, he will be able to do this like as given. So this is like stacking of the plates. And if you told your kid or a small child to stack the cups without knowing the other details, he will be able to stack the cups. But if you see our deep learning models, they are not this generalized, meaning that 
if you tell the engines to do this, the computer model will not be able to do this. And this is where humans are learning, transferring the knowledge of stacking the plates into stacking the cubes. So if you see transfer learning, in deep learning that is initiating is a challenge. That is, if you are saying that I want to start my deep learning model, it's challenging from to start it from beginning. You don't know which model to use and sometimes you do not have a enough data set to work on your problem. And that problem may be a medical science problem where you are analyzing some tumor data and you don't have enough tumor related uh, images. So it's basically when you are solving any deep learning, any problem using deep learning, initiating is a challenge. You don't know which models works best. You have a problem with data size and you also know how to train these models. You, you might not have enough computational power, enough time to do these things. And finally, if I choose a specific model, will it be a good result? And this all sort of issues can be very easily resolved in transfer learning. Hello, and let's continue with our course on transfer learning, that is deep learning on high steroid. And this term, transfer learning got a lot of, lot of focus when in 2016, the Andrew Engine, Andrew Engie, in NIPS 2016 conference, he gave this a graph. That is, we have commercial success, a lot of commercial success in transfer, super learning supervised learning and he says that there is a huge potential of transfer learning success in forthcoming years and it has been observed by a lot of applications we'll see some of this so in this graph you can see that industrial success the commercial success the giants wants to use and they are using now transfer learning for their application solving does this transfer learning word is a new? So absolutely the transfer learning word is not a new. So in 1995 NIFS conference again, in 1999 NIFS conference again, this term was coined in this con uh, paper that is learning to learn and Similarly, other coin that is toast is learning to learn. That is when you are learning a specific model, can you learn other things from this also? Can you consolidate knowledge so that this knowledge can be used further? And can you transfer this knowledge inductively? And these three coins, are, these words are now tossed at so many places. And this transfer learning well, first time came in 1995, but that at the time it didn't get so much of. Now, the scientists and the industry wants artificial general intelligence, general intelligence. It's called artificial general intelligence. And the heroes of deep learning are focusing or hoping the two area where artificial generalization can, general intelligence can happen is causality. That is, nowadays, whatever we are learning through deep learning is focused on what it is. That is, whether it's an apple or an orange, whether it's a cat or a dog. But the causality is, if you have an image where a person is running and behind him a dog is running, can you find out why the man is running? Can computers algorithm learn that the dog is behind barking, so the man is running? So that is why. Why a specific 
event is happening into the video or an image and second hope is in artificial general intelligence is, is in transfer learning that can a model learn other things from existing learn model <coughs> hello and let's continue our course on transfer learning the next success frontier in commercial applications of deep learning it's also called deep learning on high steroid and you will see why it's called a deep learning on high steroid so in this section we'll be learning traditional approaches to machine learning or a deep learning and if you see any traditional approach you will find that the model is trained on specific task here i'll be taking a simple example that specific task could be a classification of cat and a dog images and this model is built totally in isolation that is the model doesn't have any idea of other animals if you take another example that is let's say a train on a specific task that is identification of cars in a video so it's built in total isolation that is it doesn't have any idea about other vehicles and once this model is trained it can have a huge success even in unknown scene images for a classification of a cat and a dog or a car and a truck but you cannot use a, and the model are trained in a way that the knowledge is not utilized to further learn new things and this is a typical traditional deep learning and machine learning approaches so if you see what is a transfer learning so it's an application of skill or knowledge or an attitude that is learned in one situation to apply it into the other situation if if i'm saying that and th this definition was given by perkins in 1992 so let's say you have already learned you have a skill to drive a cycle ride a cycle and when you are learning a bike you have already utilized the balancing knowledge of learning when learning the cycle similarly when you are you and you are learning a bike riding you are automatically utilizing the gear the acceleration and the brake mechanism for car learning so this is the skill learned in one situation or a knowledge of a gear and a accelerator in one situation is applied to another situation in machine learning we can say that if our model has learned how to classify cat and a dog can it classify horse without much information given and if you see in transfer learning there is a well known model which is called an inception model of google it has been trained on 1.5 million images and it has more than 20k classes this classes are growing the classes is a boat a ship a car a human a mountain and more than 20000 classes and if we if we say that i can utilize this learning of inception model into my applications you are actually doing a transfer learning so let's see how run first learning is different from traditional machine learning models so if you see the traditional machine mo learning model every model is trained with its specific purpose that is the task 
one. Hello, and let's see. Let's continue our course on transfer learning. That is deep learning on high steroid. In this section, we will see how traditional machine learning is different from transfer learning. We have seen some basic understanding of it, but we will see with examples. So let's say we have this is a traditional machine learning model. where the different where a specific machine learning model is solving a specific task let's say maybe a finding and uh, classifying a specific shape similarly the other learning model is there which is learning to classify some other issue here i am giving an example of classification but transfer learning can also be used in unsupervised learning also in nlp also in and other domains also of deep learning or machine learning but if you see the transfer learning it has this knowledge transfer in learning system that is you have learned some specific tasks of classification and this learning model has some knowledge and this knowledge you are transferring to learn the new task so typical traditional model is not transferring the knowledge and here it's transferring this knowledge so why we need a transfer learning model because we have a complex problems in industry and that industry has we cannot have a huge label data because if you see a deep learning model success is they need a huge label data and in an industry we don't have huge label data for supervised learning in all the fields and to gather this huge amount of a data is costly time consuming and it's difficult so this is our core problem that and why andrew engine in 2016 says the commercial success of transfer learning will be very crucial is due to this main reason and if you see the imagenet the inception model which is trained on the imagenet data set has huge amount of images huge amount of a classes and this imagenet data set has been created and it's still growing so nowadays we have more than 20k classes so and this has been prepared by stanford and the image has boxing annotation to more than 10 lakhs images so deep learning models which is on right now having a good high accuracy they are built in isolated environment and they are breaking the benchmark on specific task specific task is a classification of two objects or 10 objects or 20 objects they are not generalized so in summary we can say that the deep learning models are trained in isolated no knowledge transfer is there and they are having huge accuracy but the problem is the new problems in industry has a limited data limited computational time and resources and still we want a success just like a traditional benchmark algorithm which are solving with 95 and 98% of an accuracy <clears throat> hello and let's continue our course on transfer learning in this section we will see why transfer learning is used by commercial giants the first important thing is there is a short supply of label data that we have already discussed 
The calibration of a data is again a very expensive task and learning process is not only a time consuming but it also has a lot of cost of GPUs and TPUs is involved in this to train the models. An industry, a small industry which wants to use deep learning cannot have these three things because they cannot spend a huge amount of money to train the specific models. So the thing is how to extract a knowledge which is learned from related similar domain to help learning in the target domain and that target domain has a very few data very few data labeled data specifically and to how to extract this knowledge learn from related domain to speed up the learning so it has two basic advantages that is it speed up the learning cost is reduced and it works good even if on a very few labeled data we, we have already seen this example let's say this is a data set of trucks this is data track uh, set of tractors labeled data we want to classify the image as truck or a tractor and our training model will learn it and this is our model one now we have another set of data that is cars and motorbikes this is our second task to identify cars and motorbikes this is our model two can we use the features from task one if we are you if we can use it this is called a transfer learning <laughs> The other example, which, which is slightly different from the typical, the previous example. That is, we want to classify in fruits, apple and let's say orange. And our entire training data set was built on conveyor belt. So the domain is fruit classification and it has a very good accuracy on unseen data also. The task two is again a fruit classification, but the area is changed now we want to do it in market we don't have a data set which is of conveyor belt like so if the same model is applied with new unseen data of a market there will be high degradation in accuracy and this is called uh, generalized learning a specific learning over learning and not learning the context and that's why the degradation in accuracy is there because the trained model was trained on conveyor belt fruit images and you are giving an images in the market which is having people and other fruits and vegetables involved in this so it gets confused with the data so where actually you can use transfer learning so the lower level features in the previous example the lower level features of tires can be used by the next model to learn new things the preservation of ages shapes corner and intensity in fruit images can be utilized to make it more general and classify it in market also. Can we use the same ages, shapes and corner in other tasks also? And apart from this, can we transfer knowledge also? So this is why the transfer learning is very important field in computer science and specifically in deep learning. And it's called deep learning on steroid. Why? Because the steroid is, you have already learned something and you are just utilizing this knowledge in the next domain. Hello, my name is Mohsin and let's continue our course on transfer learning. That is deep learning on high steroid. In this section we will see 
some of the technical notations that are used in transfer learning. And in this slide and section, we are specifically discussing a research paper involving the survey study on transfer learning. That is, now here you can see that if two components, let's say it's having two components, we have a feature space X and its marginal distribution of feature space as Px is given uh, for the feature, feature sets. In general, if two domains are different, they have different feature spaces or they have different marginal distribution. In the first example, that is of car and a truck, truck uh, that is tr truck and a tractor have different feature space compared to the identification of classification of car and a motorbike. While we have different marginal distribution in this second example of fruit classification in conveyor belt and fruit classification on market. So a given a specific domain and the label space Y for each XI in the domain, we want to predict the corresponding label of the task. So in general, if two tasks are different, they may have a different label space. The example is, in the first example, it was truck and a tractor. The labels were different than car and a motorbike. The next is, so we have a domain D, we have a domain D, feature space X, we have marginal distribution Px for the feature space and our task is to give a label Y given a feature space distribution. So we have label space and probability of Y label space given X feature space. So given a source domain and a source learning task and a target domain and a target learning task, the transfer learning helps our aim to improve the target domains function using the source knowledge. That is our domain of source is different than domain of target okay and this is what it is so we have we may have a different feature space different marginal distribution we can also have a different label space we will see an example of this uh, in the forthcoming slides and we can also have a different probability based on feature space and our fruit convener related example falls into this last category that is of this. The domain difference we have already discussed and we will discuss this in the next example. So let's say we have a cancer data. So we have some source domain related features. We have some source domain related features that is X1 and X2. And we have target related features X1, X2, X3. Our data is only cancer data. But we want a different feature space marginal distribution for same data. So the task is to classify it into whether you have a cancer or you don't have a cancer. And the other example is again same data but you are classifying it into cancer level 1, 2, 3 or 0. So same cancer data and feature space is also same you can say 
but now when with the model when we it will learn it it will have different feature space and that's what i was discussing in the previous example that is it it's not having the same target the targets are now different initially the label space was cancer yes or no and in this case it's cancer 1 cancer 2 cancer 3 and it depends on because the feature space will be now different and probability distribution that is marginal distribution will also be different hello i am mosin and let's continue our course on transfer learning hope you are enjoying this course if you have any doubt please let me know a new demy question answer session section so i'll be happy to reply you in this section we will discuss what actually we need to transfer because we want to transfer the learning so what sort of a learning we should transfer so let's see in the model when we are doing any training of a model we have the instance which we can transfer to other model the example is cancer data so the same cancer instances can be used in classification of cancer level 1 2 and 3 we can also have features internal features of an images that could be an lower level features like edges corners and intensity or it can be an higher level features like a segmentation of a tumor in the same model we also have a model which is trained on it might have multiple convolutional layers it can have a uh, relu layers it will also have a feature reduction uh, layers and finally when this model is trained it has lot of neurons and the neurons has a weight so this all things can be transferred and we have to see how we can transfer it so we have to weight the instances in the previous example that is cancer is yes no now we have to give whether the cancer is of level 4 or 3 or 2 we have to unify these features of tumor segmentations its colors and things like that and we sometimes also need to map the models and change few things in the model to adapt it to the new task and the other why is the other w is when to transfer in which situation we should see the transfer and we have seen some example that is if you don't have a computational power you can go for transfer learning if you don't have enough label data set you can go for transfer learning so these are the situation few situations where transfer learning can be important if you don't have enough time to train all the model uh, and still you are not getting an enough accuracy you can explore the transfer learning in 2019 paper by pan and yang which has an extensive research survey on transfer learning and he has given a lot of different type of transfer learning that is unsupervised transfer learning inductive transfer learning inductive transfer learning also has two phases that is self taught learning and multitask learning self taught learning and multitask learning in unsupervised learning even if you don't have any data how to do the transfer learning in unsupervised environment that also is discussed in this model so if you if you want to go into this transfer learning details you can go and read out this paper which is a survey on transfer learning which is having amazing detail on transfer learning hello i am mosin and let's continue our course 
transfer learning. In all previous session, we talked a lot about the advantage of transfer learning. But there is an also an issue which is called a negative transfer. Meaning that in all the cases, transfer learning is not all effective. In some situations, even it is degrading the performance. So if your tasks are too dissimilar, I mean they don't have any relation. Let's say you have trained a model on NLP and you are using the same trained model in image classification, you may get a negative transfer. And this has been discussed by Rosentine in NIPS 2005 workshop. There is also research going on that is how to identify whether the two tasks are related and we can use transfer learning on that or not. And that has been discussed in NIPS 2003 conference. Similarly, we can also have a mechanism which avoids the negative transfer. And that needs to be studied theoretically. That is how we can identify that the model is going into the negative transfer. So summarizing all this, the transfer can be a negative also and you cannot apply or you should not rather apply a deep learning transfer learning model into two very different tasks. Now in terms of technically what specific things that we can transfer. So the objective of inductive transfer learning is to infer the mapping of training data set to the feature class labels. The model actually learns to map input features to the class label. And this accuracy on assumption of distribution of training data is actually called an inductive bias. And in inductive transfer learning, we actually want to learn the utilize inductive bias of source task into assisting the target task. The inductive bias is mapping of feature space into the class label. We have already seen a lot of training time is required in deep learning model. A lot of resources are required and real world applications do not have a large label data and that's why in deep learning specifically transfer learning is very useful. Hello. Let's continue our course that is deep learning on high steroid transfer learning. In this section I'll be discussing transfer learning in deep learning. So now we are switching our gear to specifically discussing the transfer learning in deep learning. Why we need a transfer learning is deep in deep learning is because we need a lot of training time if we are going to train our model from scratch. Imagine that we have an imaginary data set which is having lakhs of uh, images. And if you want to train it on Amazon Cloud, AWS, then it, it needs um, approximately 45 minutes. Similarly, if you are going to train, uh, let's say, ResNet model uh, on ImageNet with some specific EC2 instance with having eight NVIDIA V100 GPUs, then it takes three hours of training this ResNet model. This is about a specific model. So the issue is it needs a lot of training time. And apart from this, we, uh, we need a lot of infrastructure also. One more problem is of having a low data set. Sometimes we don't have for a specific problem like medical data, medical imaging. 
we don't have this sort of images. So our data set is very small. And due to this, our training from scratch will not work. Similarly, other infrastructure that we have it is, is Google Cloud, Amazon AWS, uh, sorry, Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google TPUs. So these are the other structures, uh, resources that we can use for transfer uh, for deep learning. Now where this deep learning are applied? So we have a lot of pre-trained model people have created with amazing accuracy. The first section we are discussing is classification model. So we want to classify an image in a specific classes. So for that, there are a few well-known models are Oxford VGG16, Microsoft ResNet, and Google Inception model is also there. We have AlexNet is also there. and here you can see the, the internal structure of the inception model is like this. We, we have various convolutional layers. You can see these are the convolutional layers. Then we have a max pooling layers with RAID. Then we have a fully connected layers. And finally, you can have a softmax layer. The softmax layer, this, this model is actually classifying it into 1000 classes. So uh, in our coding, we will see uh, we'll use this VGZ16, ResNet, and Google Inception model to classify for our classes also. We have other print trained model for specifically post detection is deep pose and open pose. And this model help us in identifying posts from the videos. And the applications for this is could be a dancing, posture detection, actions detection, uh, if, if you are creating an app for deaf and dumb and where you want to convert a specific actions of hand gestures and you want to do some command based on that. So that can also be done with open pose and deep pose models, pre-trained models. And this same deep pose model can also be used in spots. The other pre-trained model already available is in natural language processing NLP also. We have a Glow, which is of Stanford. We have what to work of Google's and recently Google has also launched a BERT that is bi-directional encoder representation for transformers. These three models are pre-trained models for NLP related applications. The applications could be uh, question answering machines, sentence predictions, text processing like summarizations, grammar, and it can also be used for translation. And there are so many other NLP applications that you can think and you can use this above model that is Glow, word to work but for quick access. Even sentiment analysis can also be you done and there you can use this BERT model also. The other uh, pre-trained model in object detection category is YOLO and COCO model. And uh, here you can see this is an object detection using a YOLO. So you feed a video and it will detect where is a bicycle, where, the, where are the cars and traffic lights and so on and so forth. So these are the already trained models on specific uh, for specific object detections and you can retrain it to do uh, detection for your objects. Maybe your objects could be an image processing, uh, maybe a medical imaging object where you want to detect a white cell or a blood cell and then you want to count it or you want to find out a tumor in some uh, medical imaging. So this is a very good uh, video prediction using this neural advection model is there, which is for video prediction. So this is other front where pre-trained models are already there. You can go and search it out. And there is one more thing that this pre-trained model can do is based on a ResNet, People train the faces and then comes a model which is called RaceFace 101. So now this model is specifically tuned to detect faces. So this is a double transfer learning. You had a ResNet model 
and that beyond that people has created a race face model and you can use this race face model to detect your own faces maybe to put the face based attendance system in your institute then we have a pre trained model in segmentation category also to uh, the well known model is marks rcnn and various flavors of mask rcnn are there fast r mask rcnn and likewise so the what it does is that given an image it finds the segment of the image object so this is a bottle in object detection you you only give a bounding box like this is a car but if you want extract this car specific car then segmentation works into the picture the specific example of segmentation fitting a segmentation is in imaging uh, medical imaging where a tumor related uh, x ray is there with you uh, a ct scan maybe is there with you and you want to detect a tumor area a specific size of a tumor you want to detect so that segmentation really is helpful for medical imaging a specific model which which is gaining uh, which is having a huge success in accuracy is called unit model so this unit model is specifically transfer learning model for medical imaging you here you can see this is an expert opinion and this is a unit opinion of finding a specific area in brain so unit is again a pre trained model for medical imaging we have a bird model we we have already discussed this bird model is for nlp applications now uh, th these are various models which you can use for a specific application maybe a classification object detection nlp and segmentation in the next model uh, video we'll see how which are the various way to use this models into a deep learning applications hello and uh, let's continue our transfer learning course in this section i'll be telling you the three ways of using pre trained model so the first is you have specific uh, pre trained model let's say i'm discussing here let's say an inception model is there so this is an inception model we have a fully connected layers with uh, 100 output and finally a softmax layer with 100 nodes now let's say i have a monkey species data set which is having uh, various images of monkeys and it is having 10 classes so if i give this monkey images different monkey images from this 10 model so what will happen to the model what will happen is that it will detect that it's a monkey but it will not detect it of a specific category because it is uh, the model is trained for 1000 classes if you give a car it will say it's a car if you give a monkey it will say it's a monkey but it will not say it's a which monkey from this species so one way of doing a transfer learning is you remove the last softmax layer and replace it with your number of classes layers so instead of having a softmax layer with 1000 outputs dense layer of 1000 neurons you can say it will only have a 10 so you will have a 10 output as a 10 models only in a softmax activation layers and then you have your monkey images maybe let's say 2000 monkey images for each class to 200 images so you will train it and when you are training it you will not update the weights in in it the the models will be freezes it it will only train for the last layer this is the first modeling transfer learning use the second is instead of using a fully connected dense layer and a softmax activation layer what you can do is the output of the image the output of this layer let's say here it says fully connected 4096 so it is having 4096 features so whenever you give an image let's say of a specific monkey image monkey image from this 
it will give you here 4096 features of that image. You can extract for each of your image this 4096 features and then you can train it on maybe a SVM model, support vector machine. So the second way of doing is feature extractor using transfer learning model for only extracting the features and this features you will extract on other machine learning models maybe an SVM or uh, NeoBias classifiers or any other. And the third way of doing a transfer learning is using some of the layer unfreeze you unfreeze this layer and you train these layers also. So basically what happens is when you have a dense layer, a dense, uh, a big model having some convolutional layer, then max pooling and convolutional and max pooling and then flattening layers and likewise. So the initial uh, layers detects the lower levels of features like lines and likewise. The some middle layers detects like in a contour, a specific region as a features and the lower layer de detects and specific objects. So when, when we are giving our data sets for 10 species of the monkey, what will happen is that th these layers, if we unfreeze them, means we, we train this model also, so it will detect a specific features of each of the monkey. So the accuracy will be higher. And let's state, means you will change this and finally you will have, instead of FC1000, you will have fully connected layers of 10 and finally you have a soft map activation layers. So the three way of doing transfer learning is you only change the last layers that is dense layer with number of classes. Second is you remove this fully connected layers and you extract the features of these images and then apply a different total different machine learning model there. And the third is you fine tune some of the layers for better detection of your classes. Hope you enjoy uh, the session and we will see the examples of this in the coding section. Thank you very much. Hello and uh, let's continue our course on transfer learning. Uh, which type of Transfer learning for deep learning you will use depends on the data. So if you have a small data set and this data set is similar to your original data set. That is, let's say if you're detecting a specific cars like Ferrari is there or a Jaguar is there. So the original model has some sort of a car detection algorithm in there. So you don't need to tune it, otherwise it will overfit it and you just have to use a linear classifier, means adding a softmax layer at the last end, just fit the model and it will work. You don't have to tune it. If you have a large data set and that is similar to original data set, large data set means when you're training the images and you, you have more than 10,000 images, so you, have, you can say it's a large data set. So it's better to fine tune the models, means unfreeze some of the last layers models as discussed over here. You fine tune these layers and it will have a better results. And if you have a large and totally different data set, means you, you have 10,000 images and it's, let's say it's related to uh, C images, C creatures. So at the time, it's better to train your convolutional layer from scratch. So instead of, instead of just tuning this layers, you will tune it to maybe at this level, layer also, or maybe from scratch. It will be uh, slightly costly in terms of time, but you will have a better accuracy in that. So just to give you an idea how the, the transfer learning, let's say here you have the model which, which is, uh, for is doing image recognition for one lakh images and you want a radiological diagnosis. You have some image related, uh, image related to medical 
then you will change this last layer and replace it with the models having only 100 outputs. Similarly, if you have an audio recognition system where you are detecting a speech, let's say you, you are detecting 10,000, uh, you have trained your model, this model on, it's a 10,000 hour of speech and it's detecting maybe more than 1,000 different words. Now you want to make uh, a model for wake words like hello Alexa. So you want to pre-train your model to only wake up the Alexa. So at that time, uh, this wake word or a trigger word detection, you are not doing, you are removing this, you are adding few layers and then you are finally adding this uh, wake words detection model over here. So you maybe have only one or two wake words for detecting this. And this is a slide taken from Andrew Ng's uh, transfer learning uh, explanation and uh, it's a very good video to understand transfer learning. That this I also explained in the previous model that the initial layers of the deep learning models usually detects edges and lines. The middle layers detects shapes uh, and some areas and the high level features are detected in the, in the last layers, usually the objects and specific features related to the objects. When we will be discussing the transfer learning, you will see that uh, discussing something like top one accuracy, top five accuracy. So what this top one accuracy is, let's say I'm using an VG16 model and I have given an image of a cat and it detects it's a dog. It, it's only giving one class. So it, it's plain in that means if, if it detecting, if my detection is in top five, Let's say I have detected, means I have given a cat image. It's saying that with 95% accuracy, it's a dog. And with 5% accuracy, it's saying cat. 5% accuracy, it's saying cat in, in a cat image. So here in this, this correctness is not identified, but here that will be identified because out of 1000 classes in top five, your model is select detecting it. So top five is you will have five prediction for the given image, top five prediction. Cat by 60%, dog by 30% and some other object by 2% and likewise. So top five accuracies will be given. So usually top five accuracy will be higher. So you can say VG16 has only 71% accuracy in top one. Because when you're saying top one, it says if you're giving a cat and it's dog, it's wrong. But in top two, let's say if it's saying in the first it's saying with 60% accuracy, it's cat, dog, 60% accuracy in dog and it, with 20% accuracy, it's saying it's a cat, then also it's considered as correctly classified because it's in top two accuracy. It's in top two probable classes, top two probable classes. And these are the number of parameters in each of this model and you can see the denseness of the various models, they are amazing. So this is an end of explanation theory part of transfer learning. Welcome to Teachable Machine Learning. My name is Mohsin and let's see what the Teachable Machine Learning is. So Teachable Machine Learning, it's a web-based tool by Google. It is having a machine learning models and it's for everyone means if you don't know anything about uh, machine learning insights, the maths, the expertise you don't have, still you can do the machine learning course. It's fast because it uses transfer learning. You will see uh, if you don't have an idea on what is the transfer learning, you can dig down uh, to my course that is transfer learning on Udemy. It is easy as it doesn't have maths, almost no codes and you don't require any expertise. The model which you have created, you can deploy it on your sites, on your app and your IoT device, maybe Raspberry also. 
So it's quite easy to deploy the machine learning models which you have created. Now, how you can do this teachable machine learning is first you have to gather the data for your classes. So you are going to work with the classification. You want to identify let's say cat and dog. So you will need set of classes of set of images of cat and set of images of dogs. And then you will train this model. This training will happen at your side only in the browser itself. No data will be deployed at Google or at any other locations. It will be at your side only. So you can try uh, the model with your private data also. And once the model is trained, you can export it into your app, your websites or on the Raspberry Pi using the tensorflow.js. So the model is really a TensorFlow model. So you can uh, tweak them later if you have a machine learning expertise. What sort of, a, sort of a project you can do is there are three types of project like image based project, sound based project and pose based project. Let's see what the image based projects can be. If you want to classify a cat and a dog, so you will need set of cats and set of dogs. If you want to classify the expression, then you will need few samples of smiling faces, few samples of angry faces, few samples of surprise faces, faces. And later stage, you can train this model and then you can know uh, what the expression is when the testing is done. You can do also COVID related projects like whether the mask is on or not. So mask or no mask project can also be done. So you need to collect samples like this. The more diverse samples you have, the, more, the better the model will be. Instead of having only one face, you can have different people, different types of mask, and then the model will be uh, having the real world like features. On the sound side, uh, you can do the classifications of different types of sounds like air condition sound, car horn sounds, child playing sounds. You can also do, I, I from the movie the dialogues of uh, different uh, actors like if a movie is going on and you want to extract only the, the dialogues of some specific actor so you need to first train that uh, the model using the specific actor sounds and then from the movie it will identify where the the actor is saying which dialogues the next is detection of pose so uh, the third project is uh, pose detection where uh, you can have a yoga based uh, app where it detects what sort of a yoga you are doing. The yoga you are doing is right or wrong. The dance related project can also be done. Uh, that is uh, whether you are doing a specific steps of a dance or not. In the pose project, you can also have the players athletes related moves can also be categorized whether the athlete is doing right move or not or whether he is doing right tracking or not. So this all sort of projects can be done. So basically three types of projects, image, sound and post projects can be done with teachable machine learning. So let's dig in in the next section. Welcome to teachable machine learning. And in this section, we will see uh, the project, which is an image classification project where we will classify two images that is whether the person has weird a mask or no mask. So let's get started. We'll, we'll click on image project first. Once we click on image project, we have two classes now mask and no mask. Let's take some sample from the webcam. So here I have my kit will be wearing a mask and come in the center. So now we'll record it for some time. Okay, so we have taken some 60 images. Uh, I'd like to delete few images because uh, we have other mask also which we will be taking. Now, let's say, still I'm removing few images. Okay, 30 images of this mask. 
uh, let's take the other mask so that we have a variation in the mask and that would be better okay so we have again taken 60 around images uh, now uh, let me take my photo uh, so that we have again a variation And uh, the mask images. Now we will need no mask images. Okay, we have taken some uh, no mask images. We'll take some more no mask images. Okay, now uh, this is the data collection. Now I have taken more examples of a mask and less example of a no mask. You can have it uh, uniformly also. But uh, now let's get uh, to the training. So I have clicked on training. We will discuss advanced options uh, in the later stage of the course. Once this training is started, it will pop up the message. Don't switch the tab. So you must not switch the tab and wait for the training to complete. Now let's see whether it's detecting. See, it's detecting no mask, no mask. As soon as he wears a mask, there will be like mask. Okay, so it's quite working fine. Uh, now this is my kid who is wearing the mask, and you can see it's uh, saying mask, and it's hundred percent mask. And if he removes a mask. It immediately says no mask. So the algorithm is perfectly running. Welcome to Teachable Machine Learning. In this section, we are going to see an image classification project. So let's get started. Uh, first, you will get on uh, open this Teachable Machine Learning with Google.com, and then you will go on Get Started. You'll find three options with you, image project, audio project, and post project. First, select the image project. Now, in this section, we are going to classify the Indian rupees notes. So, first I'll create uh, no money as a background class. And I'll take some samples of that. So you click on webcam, uh, you, you show the, the background, uh, let's say, and we'll select some images. Uh, let me delete few of the images and add my hand into the images because when I'm going to scan it, uh, I'll need, uh, from here you can select, uh, delete few of the samples. So let's uh, have 50 samples, 25 samples. And uh, my note will be there, so I want to, in, in the background my hand also. So now here you can see we have almost uh, 57 images as a background. Now let's say I have two notes of 20 rupees, uh, so I, I'll scan them, I'll take the snaps of that. We have 60 images of 20 rupees. One more 20 rupees node is there, so we'll take that also. So we have approximately 110 images of 20 rupee. Let me go with the 100 rupees. So in that again, I have two nodes. Uh, let's uh, create a class for that. So, in the webcam again, this 100 rupees note. You can flip it also and check uh, 
Okay, so I have taken 100 images of one sample. Two images. I'll flip it. Okay, so this is the images I have collected, uh, 200 images almost, uh, and in the in the 20 rupees notes uh, we have taken only one side. So let's take this other side also. So this is the other side. Let's take. Okay, and uh, for the other coin, let's take the other side also there. So for 20 rupees note, the other side. So we have almost same samples for 20 and uh, 100 rupees note. Uh, let's take uh, one more sample of 200 rupees note. So we have only one type of 200 rupees note. So I have taken some uh, 140 images approximately. This is 200 rupee. Let's say I have 500 rupees note also with me. So let's take sample for that also. So this is 500 rupees note. And let's flip it. Let's take this flip also again, more precisely. Okay, so we, we have now 130 images of that also, and that is 500 rupees note. Now let's train this model. So I'm training this model. It will take some time, so please wait for that time. And when the model is training, right now the data is being, pad, being prepared. Once data is prepared, uh, we, we, one pop-up will be displayed over here, that is don't switch this tab. See, don't switch this tab. So now you have to, uh, as the model is over here, the data is being uh, trained over the browser itself. So we will wait for some times. It's done. The model is trained, so now let's see the performance. Right now, no money. See, it's saying it's 200 rupees note with confidence. How about this? Uh, it's saying 100 rupees, see? 100 rupees note. Confidence is slightly blurry. Uh, it depends on how we took the sample. So now see, it's 100 rupees. Let's see for this, it's 20 rupees. 20 rupees. And again, for other 20 rupees, clear, 20 rupees. And finally, we have, what is this note? It's saying 100 rupees. So we did it, the classification of Indian rupees. We also had 500 rupees note. How it does? Yes, 500 rupees note. So welcome. In this project, we are going to see an another audio project. And uh, in this, we will try to differentiate between two actors of man in black, the, their voice. So that's Will Smith. So let's first take the background noise for 20 seconds. I'll be not speaking anything for 20 seconds so that I can have a background noise.
So once you have taken this uh, 20 second background noise, let's extract the samples. So now this is the sample, which is uh, minimum 20 samples are required for extracting the background noise. Now let's take the voice of Will Smith. And uh, I'll be taking the uh, voice from the dialogue pursuit of happiness. Okay, so. Two second in two seconds. See what the setting which I have done is in two second. The, the recording will start for ten seconds, uh, and then I'll take that uh, sample extracted out. There for the last half hour, trying to come up with a story that would explain my being here, dressed like this, and and I wanted to come up with a story that would demonstrate qualities that I'm sure you all admire here, like, like earnestness or diligence. Now, now, so I'll extract the sample. It's 10. Still, I, I want to take a few more samples. So let's uh, slide it back. Again, uh, I'll start recording. Here, like, like earnestness or diligence, team playing to something. And I couldn't think of anything. So the truth is, I was arrested for failure to pay parking tickets. Parking tickets. Okay, so, so we got the uh, 20 samples of Will Smith. Now, the, the other actor we have is uh, Tommy. So, so let's create a class of Tommy. And... Uh, Again, I'll take the samples uh, from Man in Black a movie. Uh, let's see where it is. Okay, this one. Uh, maybe this. Uh, yes. So here he will be speaking few things. Again, the, the voice will start in two seconds. For the eye test. Everybody thought the agency was a joke, except the aliens who made contact March 2, 1961, outside New York. There were nine of us the first night. Seven agents, one astronomer. The one dumb kid who got lost in the wrong back road. Oh, you brought that tall man some flowers. This way. They were a group of intergalactic refugees. Okay, so the next sample I'll be taking from here. So let's extract this sample again. Uh, let's uh, start the voice from with intergalactic refugees. I wanted to use the Earth as an apolitical zone for creatures without a planet. Did you ever see the movie Casablanca? Same thing, except no Nazis. Oh. We agreed, and we concealed all the evidence of their landing. Uh huh. So these are real flying saucers, and the World's Fair was just a cover-up for their landing. So Why else would we hunt in Queens? Example. More non-humans arrive every year. Uh, now let's train this model. Training will take some time and then we will have one more scene when we'll see whether it's able to differentiate between this two uh, two voice. Please hold on till the training completes. There will be pop-up. Uh, you, you should not switch the tabs when the training is going on. Here you can see don't switch the tabs. Now the training is going on. Once the training is done, we'll play the, the further clip of that same and see how it behaves. They live among us in secret. Uh, look, I'm sorry, not to change the subject or anything, but when was the last time you got a CAT scan? About six months ago, it's company policy. Right, you should make another appointment. Uh, look, tell your boys Ed, I had an absolutely wonderful time, and thank you for everything, but uh, why don't you show me the door? All right. I'm gonna get some coffee. You want some coffee? No, thank you, I'm fine. Well, she was the only one that actually seemed dangerous at the time, sir. How'd you come to that conclusion? Well, first I was going to pop this guy hanging from a street light, and then I realized, you know, he's just working out. I mean, how would I feel somebody come running in a gym, busting my ass while I'm on a treadmill? 
Then I saw this uh, snarling beast guy, and I noticed he had a tissue in his hand. I realized, you know, he's not snarling. He's sneezing. You know, ain't no real threat there. And I saw a little Tiffany. I'm thinking, you know, eight-year-old white girl, middle of the ghetto, bunch of monsters, this time of night with quantum physics books. She's about to start some s*** in. She's about eight years old. Those books are way too advanced for her. If you ask me, I say she's up to something. And to be honest, I'd appreciate it if you eased up off my back. So this is what the uh, the accuracy is, uh, and you can see definitely when Will Smith or do I owe her an apology? Was saying Will Smith, and when Tommy is saying it was Tommy, but when it was Paws, uh, it was sort of a Tommy was selecting because our background noise was not correct. So if you take a background of the movie, and then if you could have played it, it would have a better results. So this is how we will do the machine learning. Uh, for audio classification. Thank you very much. Hey, welcome to the course Teachable Machine. Uh, let's get started. In this section, we are going to see the audio project. And I would like to differentiate between two voice that is bell ringing and clapping. So I have downloaded two uh, wave files from net. I'll put it into the source section so you can also download it and now let's first have a background noise So now we have extracted nearly 20 samples of background noise. Now let's say uh, bail. And uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be starting the recording uh, of samples after five seconds so that it can play properly. Now we got the nine audio samples uh, for micro uh, bail. Now let's add one more class that is clapping. And again, I'll be playing it after five seconds. So now we have extracted again uh, the eight minimum samples. Now let's train this model. It may take some time. During that time, uh, the more the sample you add, the better the classification will be. But here, bell and clap are totally different sort of a sounds. So the result will be good. But if the, the sounds are, if more classes are there, then it's better you have the more samples. 50, 60 samples would be better. But for this understanding purpose, I'm giving you just few samples. So see when I'm not saying anything, it's background noise. Uh, that sound is, I think, not going in, in this. Uh, that's why it's not showing. See, bail is now 100%. I have changed the settings. Now, same for applause. So, this is how uh, it's working. This is the model for clapping and bail. Welcome. And in this section, we will see teachable machine learning for pose identification. So let's get started and I'll be clicking on post project. Now, uh, first class I'll be taking is the straight head where I'll be straight pose rather than straight head. 
because I'll be leaning my shoulders also. So instead pose, let's take some samples. I have, I'm straight, uh, standing in straight form. So I've taken some 39 poses. Now let's take the tilted posture or pose. And in that I'll be recording like this. Uh, I'm showing my face is tilted. So basically it takes this, the pixels for, for reference point as this. I've taken so many, I'll be deleting few because then otherwise uh, stop it. Now I'll be deleting few. 40 around, we will keep 40, 50, it's okay. Let's see, this is 59. Let's train this model for two pose, straight pose and tilted pose. Again, it will take some time. Uh, once uh, the, the, the better coordinates you give the better result it will have again if you have more poses you should take more samples for better classification otherwise uh, it will end up in doing some false classification now so all uh, is done so now see uh, this is tilted this is straight pose this is tilted this is straight pose, so it's identifying it correctly. So as soon as um, uh, one is sitting tilted, it says it's not bad position, you should straight sit straight. That's uh, the applications of it for teacher, for students and for, for kindergarten kids. If you want to make them sitting in a proper posture, you can have this project work. Welcome to the course on teachable machine learning. In this section, we will see the pose classification and in that we will be doing a classification of two yoga poses, that is an asana. Uh, so let's get started. So once you click on the let's get started and pose project. Now let's say the first pose I have is called a mountain pose. It's also called Parvatasana. And uh, me and my kid uh, created few poses of that. So you can see that this is called a mountain pose. And uh, these are few images of that mountain pose. So I'll be selecting that mountain pose images of me and my kid. Uh, once the samples get loaded, uh, we will also take this sample now here you can see uh, as the image size is good the, the pose uh, has been identified quite properly now the second pose is called a triangle pose it's also called trikonasan and for that also i have the images this is a triangle pose uh, we are not good at yoga asan so it's not that much proper but still it, it's a triangle pose so again for that I have a few images of that. So let's open it. I selected this image. You can take the images from uh, your machine, from Google Drive or you can capture it using webcam. You can also crop the uh, images. Uh, here you can see images will be cropped to square if your images are not square. And now let's do the training. Now here also you can see that it's uh, taking this uh, pose parameter. Now it will take some time. Uh, and during that time it says that you should wait. Once uh, it is complete, uh, I'll be showing the, the some of the poses from the internet. Let's see how it detects. See here you can see it's uh, saying triangle pose quite uh, highly uh, sorry mountain pose uh, now let me show the see, triangle pose 
is also triangle pose so quite good performance uh, and as uh, one more thing that you should understand is if you have more classes you should give more samples if your poses are very close then also you should give more samples for better accuracy so hope you enjoy this close classification let's see the testing of few of this pose so we have a snap let's say how it does quite perfectly it's saying mountain pose with 100% accuracy if you take this you can see for all it's detecting as triangle pose so this also with 100% accuracy triangle pose so it has a quite good performance uh, you can add few more poses as you wish welcome to teachable machine learning in this section, we will see the deployment of teachable machine learning modules, uh, that is model. So here I have created two classes, that is me, and I have trained some images on that, around 64 images are there, which is of my photo. And there is a second class, which is my phone. I have trained it, and you can see the accuracy is quite good as that we have two classes. Now here we have an option which is called export model. Now for exporting there are three options. One is tensorflow.js. So you can export uh, the JS file. Tensorflow, so there you can have a Keras model and uh, using this Keras, you can typically in more traditional way of Python handling and the third option is TensorFlow for Lite, which is for Android-based application. So let's see first the TensorFlow for JS. Now, if you see TensorFlow for JS, here you will have an option that is upload. Once you upload this model on the cloud, you will get some link over here, which we will need it. So let's say this is the link of my trained model. And with TensorFlow for JS, I, I can have a typical JavaScript code and I can also have a pfi.js file. Now what is pfi is actually a JavaScript library uh, for creating coding, uh, quite means uh, e accessible and easy way of coding, uh, which is for artists, designers, educators, and beginners who, are work who wants to work with uh, JS. So for that, this pfi.js is created. It's free open source. Uh, and uh, if you write, uh, th there is an editor also available in p5.js. So if you click on this editor, uh, it will open this, uh, let's say, uh, one more thing I, I can show you is that is uh, over here. That is, uh, if it's p5, let's say, then uh, this is a code which is needed and if you click on this let's let me click on this and you will find that we, we have opened some editor here let me close the previous one this is the one which right now we open now th they have some pre-trained model already deployed over here instead of that we will have our own model which uh, the link which we have copied so let's say i'm copying this link and I am just pasting that link over here. So this is our model, which is uh, classifying me and my phone. Now, what this code is all about is that uh, there is a variable classifier. There is an image model URL, which is our URL of our trained model. There is a video, flip video and label. Some four variables extra are there. Now in the preload, so there are basically two, uh, actually three functions, preload, setup, and draw. So preload is whatever you want to do at initial stage. So in the preload, what we did is we created uh, mlfi.image classifier. And in that we have provided, uh, means the, the, this is a ready-made setup code. So whatever uh, URL you have plus model.json. So uploaded on cloud, it has basically three files. Uh, I have also downloaded this. Uh, if you don't want to do it online, you can also download it and you can see that it has 
three files basically. Now this is the entire P5 module. Yes, this are the three files that is needed. Metadata.json, model.json, and weight.bins. So this is this three files we have downloaded, but right now we don't need a downloading. So this is a URL where uh, we have given this URL for image classifier and from model.json, it's extracting the classifier. Now, uh, first we are creating a canvas and then this is an important line that is capturing the video. So we are creating create capture. This is all in bit library is available in P5. So create capture and if you say video, it will start capturing the video and uh, then we are specifying the video size and finally we are hiding it. Now uh, we need to flip, uh, it's not that much needed, flipping is not needed. If you, if you don't want to flip it, then also it will be okay. And finally it's calling a function classify video. So what the classify video is doing, so classify video is actually flipping the image and then it's calling a classifier.classify function. And in the classify function, we are passing this video, flipped video. You can, if you don't want to do this flipping, then you can remove that flip video. Here also you can remove that flip video and you just call the video because we have our video here. Okay, but right now I am just letting it as it is. So I'm passing that flip video content and there is a second argument got results. So this is an asynchronous function got results. So whenever it classify, it will go to this got result function, which is down here. And it gives you two things, error and a result. If there is an error, it will display, uh, it will throw an error that not find or something like that. So we are first checking in got result that if error, means if there is some error, we display console.error and we are simply returning. If there is no error, then what we are saying is label equal to result of zero dot label. So result, whatever class me or my, phone comes into this and that is the label the uh, what this zero is let, let, I'll, I'll show you right now and finally again means if if we continuously if you want to classify it then I'm again calling classify video so it will go over here again it will classify it it will go into the got result again so it, it's like looping automatically into this so let's see how the things works so now you can see it's saying my phone, my, me, my phone, me. And uh, that results is display in a draw function here in a draw function. So draw, you can see the background. We, we have set it, the, the image, flipped image that is shown. And finally, we, we have some fill over here with a black text size. We have kept is 16. This is text size. We are doing center align, so this text is in center, and we are displaying label, okay, uh, at specific width and height location. So this is here at specific location. This label is being displayed continuously. So continuously this label changes, uh, and due to that, this draw function, which is continuously calling itself, will keep on showing what is the label current, current label. See, this is the deployment of uh, if I don't call this, if I don't call this and if I run it again, you will see that nothing will happen because uh, first time it detects me and then nothing happens because you are not repeatedly calling it. So as soon as I am saying uh, classify repeatedly, it will do the classification repeatedly. So this is an way of deployment in with uh, tensorflow.js with p5.js if you want to do it with javascript if you if you have your own javascript uh, if you have something uh, like uh, your own web server and there you want your javascript machine teachable machine module then this is the code that you will need 
So that's it. This is uh, the how you can do the deployment of TensorFlow.js module uh, model of. Okay, let's talk about some detail that we were doing in this P5. So if you see the code here, uh, it might be like this. So if you open it, we I explain you the sketch JS and there I, uh, we wrote something like ML5. Now what is this ML5? So ML5 is actually the library, uh, friendly machine learning library for wave with J JavaScript. So ML5.js is again it's machine learning library uh, entirely written in JavaScript. It's approachable and uh, means it's quite easy to do the things in that. As you see that you have image classifier, similarly you have audio classifier uh, and various other classification mechanisms are there. So you need just image classifier and then image classifier simple functions you call and your class is done. But what is this ML5 comes from? So this ML5 comes from over here you need this script which is an ml5.js script library so if you don't add this line you won't be able to do this all sort of coding so you need the script and inside the script you will have this ml5 now object and using that you can create a image classifier and audio classifier and various other classification it's written on top of the TensorFlow. So you can have the TensorFlow things available with you. Uh, and you can see that uh, we will have one entire course on ml5.js, but you can see what sort of and things you can do with uh, the ML5 is all mentioned over here. That is image classifier, PoseNet, UNet, this all uh, high end models of deep learning are already there and you just have to call them simply and it will do the classifications. UNet is usually for uh, medical data classification and it's doing quite uh, great results. PoseNet, if you want to do something related to pose, dancing and yoga asans and all sort, uh, we have one code there, so that also. So it's using P5 internally using ML5 and we are calling the functions and with our model as an argument. So this is what internally it's doing. Uh, some detail uh, regarding uh, the results uh, was pending in discussion. So uh, if you see here in got results, uh, we are displaying results of zero dot label. Now, if I write only console.log, so the console, it will display over here at console.log and I'm just saying results, not zero. So as soon as I do this, uh, sorry, uh, this is a different model that uh, I, uh, we are using. Let's uh, have our model. So I'm just copying this and getting it into over here. It get, give you the idea another time. So now, if 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 I stop it now, here you can see there are a lot of results coming. For every image, it's taking this result and it's displaying object object. Now, as we have two class, it's giving us two objects. The first one, and it's saying the label is me and confidence is 99%. So you will have, suppose if you have five classes, then you will have five objects and with each of this, you will have a confidence that with what 99% confidence, this is me. And with uh, some 0.001% uh, uh, with confidence saying that it's a four. So, so if I play it again, and if I make the model slightly confused, see over here, the, the sorry. Over here, the confidence level will be slightly different. For my phone, it's 84%, right? So 16% because I was there in uh, in some portion of the 
see. So that is the confidence, the percentage of accuracy for a specific class. So you can explore this and you can have some threshold that if it's beyond 80%, then and then only you label it. So sort, the sort of things you can do with label of zero and confidence. The other, other things that you can do is you can display confidence also. Plus results of zero dot confidence, okay? And I'm doing it multiply by 100, so it show me the percentage like values. See, 94% it's me. It's 74, 54% it's my phone and something like this. So this is how you can use this confidence value all. Hello and welcome. Let's continue our teachable machine learning deployment section. In this section, we are going to learn deployment on Android device. So what I have done is, uh, in the previous video, we saw that if you want to do it on B5, how you'll do it. So I had two classes, me, my phone. I have added one more classes. Why? I'll uh, tell you later. So there is a third class, which I have created is sanitizer class, and I have uh, given some 27 images of the sanitizer. Then I train the model. As usual, we do the training. And then in the export section, as we have discussed the first one, there is tensorflow.js. Now we will discuss tensorflow.light. Now I have, why I have created three classes is due to this, that the example only support models with three or more classes that's why i have created three classes now let's follow the steps uh, we are going to work with android so you need an android studio first okay you need to download this android app examples from this github so download it uh, i have already downloaded it you can see that it's this example master.zip file and i have also extracted it uh, so uh, let me first delete it and then I'll show you from scratch what is happening over here. So you have to download this example master.zip file. And uh, one more thing that you have to do is that here as you can see for this teachable machine example, the quantized TF model only works. So what you need to do is you need to do a click on this quantized model and uh, you can see what the quantize does over here convert your model to tf quantize and you download it i have also downloaded it uh, for my model so this file is over here quantize converted file tf file quantize let me extract it and let me extract the master example master also once you extract this example master and all this now you need to open Android Studio along with it. So let's open Android Studio. Now we have downloaded this. We have unpacked the teachable machine. And if you unpack it, you will find that the, the, it has two things: the model.tf, the labels, the three labels we have: me, my phone, and sanitizer mo uh, class. Three classes are there. So we need to copy this model we need to copy this model and put it into the tensorflow let the tensorflow starts so uh, yes here tensorflow is started and uh, let's open uh, the section that is uh, where you have to open it as it's already had said that you have to open example light example image classification android uh, till this section you have to open it so this is example master light example image classification and android till this point you have to open it so once you open it it will get loaded let me show you the structure example master example master light examples you have so many examples for Android 
applications purpose uh, but right now we are focused on image classification and in that android so just copy this link and open it in uh, android studio it will take some time to open it till that point let's see uh, what else we have to do once we download it uh, we have to give this uh, model files, model.tf file into some specific area where we will copy it and one we have to change one uh, java file we will see that file how to do that so let it open okay so it has been loaded so first thing that you need to do is in app in assets uh, sorry in model sections in assets model asset you have to copy uh, your quantize folder so let's copy it control C and in assets I'll paste it quantize model so now we have this label.txt over here and the model.tf file now we will go to lib supports Java and quantize mobile net because we have downloaded quantize model for the mobile net so we will do that and at the get model path at the get model path as said we will convert it depending on our model name so our model is somewhere over here let's say the factor name so I'm copying our model name is this slash model dot tf file and similarly our label file is also at this location so we need to give the proper location of converted tf file quantized and uh, we need to just change these two things so let's uh, again see we have downloaded this master example we have downloaded quantized zip file and extracted it we have copied it into asset folders here the path is different uh, uh, the, we will see the other path so the actual path is in the models asset and here you will copy it and finally you will change this get model path and get label path to the proper path and now we will build it so we have changed it get model path and get label path now let's build it so when when we build it it might take some time uh, and then I'll show you the examples which uh, I'll show you the video recording of Android screen so that we have a proper idea that it's all going fine let's build first now as you have uh, means the Android application is installed uh, when the Android app starts, you have to select from the model that is quantize mobile net. Once you do that, it will quite easily detect the things which you are doing. So that's it. Uh, I'll show you the video also. When you hello welcome when you see the the next uh, model you you when you will run the next code in the series what you will see is that some downloading is happening so all the Keras model pre-trained weights model are downloaded in the section that is user the the user motion is there here and in that you have a folder called dot Keras and in that the models are stored in models directory so right now I have downloaded ResNet 50 TF color that is this model and non-top model also uh, in the video I'll discuss what this non-top model is there in the next video and then VGC 16 and VGC 19 model and ResNet model so basically I have three models which is if uh, ResNet 50 which is 16 and which is 19 these three models are already downloaded as soon as I'll go with inception model it will start downloading in your case if you have not downloaded it the ResNet model or VGC 16 model it will start downloading so let it start and as soon as it is complete downloading you will find the weights over here initially the weights will not be over here hope you understand this 
enjoy the execution hello and let's continue our course on transfer learning in this section we are going to use a pre-trained models few pre-trained models to classify some of our images using a python program so let's get started in this section we will use keras pre-trained models so first of all i'm going to import keras applications and in that i'm going to use let's say vgc16 model and from that i am importing pgg16 so what is this keras applications so this keras application is actually a deep learning models deep learning models available with pre trained weights on imagenet data sets and this keras models are compatible with tensorflow kno and CNTK environments, uh, frameworks. In this uh, Keras application, there is one model which is called exception, which is only uh, compatible with TensorFlow. So let's say I am using first VGC16 model. The other thing that I'm ne I'll need is Keras dot preprocessing. And from that, I'll be using image. So here, this image uh, will be used for converting our data into array. This is image into array. Uh, and it's also used for data augmentation also. The other thing that we will need is conversion of array to numpy array and that's why we we'll need numpy array we'll also need os for handling the various paths and two important uh, things that we will need is so this imagenet utility has two important functions which is called pre-processing of inputs so whatever input we are giving it needs to be converted into appropriate format of data that is if it's 224 cross 224 cross three channel that is three colors so it helps in converting the image into appropriate formats similarly uh, when we discuss the uh, image net classes in tensorflow for poets uh, i gave an example that there are, there are so many classes and uh, this classes we don't know which specific classes has which specific model. So at the time, when these labels are there, we want to convert this table, this example. Suppose the, the model will say that it's a 14 class. So we don't know what this 14 class. So we need to convert it into a prediction, proper prediction. And that's why we will need a decode prediction. So actually, it will decode the prediction into appropriate readable, human readable class. So right now, let's start with this uh, few important uh, libraries. And uh, as we have seen in the previous section, uh, I have put my test images into f colon slash test underscore images, where I have images like cat, dog, Obama, my, my photo itself, leopard photo, and such various photos are there. So we'll need that for conversion. So we are doing that. So we are going into that test directory for testing whether the pre-trained model actually detects our classes properly or not. Now, the first thing that we'll, let's say we will do is, let's say I'm going for, I'm creating a model based on VGG16. So I'm creating a model. Once the model is created, let's say I want to, let's first execute this line of code. If there any error, oh, sorry. 
that is uh, added. It's saying I forgot. Sorry, uh, it's using a skeptic one, so we need to give two slashes. Okay, done. Let's execute which is 16. So the model is created of the pre trained model, and from this, let's say what I'll do is I, I want to print some summary of the model what actually this model is all about. So here you can see the VGC 16 model has this architecture. So it's starting with, it's taking 224 cross 224, three channel images, and then it has a conventional layer, then a conventional layer, then a max pooling layer, and likewise it has huge number of uh, various layers. And finally, if you see the last layer, it has this 1000. What this 1000 is saying, it's a softmax layers and it, its output is 1000. So it's, it's basically detecting 1000 classes, classification in 1000 classes. And this 1000 classes, just now I have said, these are the classes because it's ImageNet, we are training on the ImageNet. So these are the various classes. It's a daisy and corn and on and hip and earth star and bullet and leopard and cheetah and all, all sort of. Once this is done, let's say, uh, and from this you can see right now, we, we are using a basic model. So total parameters are this and all are trainable. So you can fine tune this model for further and that example we'll see in further section. Now let's have an image. So let's say I have, I'm creating an image. Let's say I'm saying it's a cat. I think it, it is cat 2 or let's say it's an leopard. So there is a leopard image in my database, leopard.jpg. I want to check which in which class it's identifying the leopard. Once uh, I got this, so now what I need to do is using this image class, I need to convert, uh, I need to load this image. So I'm loading an image, I'm giving an image path and my target size could be, because the original image in the data set could be of any size and I want to convert it into 224 cross 224 because my model is taking, because my model is taking the image of this and three channel. It's actually three channels, so we, we are not specifying a channel. Once this is done, we have loaded the image in IMG. Now we need to convert this into an image, uh, an array, so using image to array, we are converting this image pixel data into an array. Now, we need to convert this into a proper shape. Let's see if I saying display X. Spelling mistake of leopard. So let me see what is an image name there. Oh, test images and its name is leopard. Spelling mistake. Forgot the spelling of a leopard. That's so this is what the image uh, data is. Now I need to convert it into a specific format. So I'm using an NP and I'm expanding the dimensions of X and I'm going for X is zero. And then finally, this needs to be converted into appropriate dimension so I'm converting it this and if I finally if I print print X this is what now our dimension of the image is this is needed to feed the data into proper format now this X is actually um, our pixel data in three channels 
So now let's using a model, let's predict what the axis giving output. So it's giving some values. Okay, and we need to decode it. So let's say I'm saying print predicted class because this X, this features, let's display this features also so you have some understanding. So see, this is giving an 100 records, sorry, 1000 records base value. So now what I'm doing is predicted class and I'm predicting the proper feature. So once I run this, you can see it's predicting that it's cheetah with 48% accuracy. And it's also predicting second is leopard with 47% accuracy and it's giving some numbers. It's also detecting it as it's Jaguar as 0.1%. Uh, uh, it's also detecting it's uh, Ferrari chicken. And likewise, let's say now here, if I say two, it's actually top two accuracy. So it's top two accuracy is leopard and cheetah. And if it's detecting right, then it's part of a successful accuracy. If in top two accuracy, if the cheetah is not or leopard is not detected, then we can say that the accuracy is failing in top two. So here, this two indicates top two accuracy. Here, if I give top five, it gives me top five accuracy. So it's actually a cheetah and it's uh, detecting, uh, it's actually a leopard and detecting a leopard with 47% accuracy. If I give it the name of, let's say, in our data set, we have car also I need to run all this for, to get this data again and again and finally this so you can see it's saying that it's sports car with 40% accuracy car wheel 23% accuracy racer 16 so it's having some sort of accuracy here <coughs> Now, let's say I'll do it for cat. I'm not printing now these things. Directly going for a class and it's, you can see it's tabby. So it's again a cat, Egyptian cat, 14%, tiger cat, it's 12%. And it's detecting almost all four cats. Similarly, we have dogs also. So you can see it's Collier, it's a dog, it's Tibet and Mastiff, it's also a dog, Shelter Land Sheep Dog, it's dog. So it's detecting as a dog for majority of the classes using VGC 16. Let's say uh, I want to test one more model. So I'll say from Keras applications dot uh, ResNet, let's say, and I'm importing ResNet 50 model. We have discussed the ResNet is provided by Microsoft, VGC is by Oxford. And now let's say I'm saying it's my new model, model 2, and I'm saying ResNet 50. And uh, if you see, uh, we can pass parameters also over here. So let's say I'm passing some parameter which is called include top. It's true. So what this include drop is that the last layer in the model, if you see the summary, it's a dense layer, last dense layer. So do you want to use that the features till this layer or this layer or this layer? So when you are saying include top true, so it will download the weight which are part of which are covering the lance dense layer. If I say false, it will not use, since it will use uh, weights till this point. Okay, so right now we are saying true and it's two different files available uh, in, the, the, in the models. 
Now, if, if I go for this, it's our model two and it's done. So now if I display its summary, you can see it has different number of parameters, but again, it is having 1000 last dense layer is 1000. So that is detecting 1000 classes and it has all these different model, retain different model. Now let's test, test how my model is detecting the last one, which was a dog. So in this, okay, we have predicted, but uh, we also need to display it. So it's again Tibetan territory. And in, in this case, let's say if I'm doing this to using VGZ 16, so you can see it's Kohli 19%, but he is saying Tibetan territory, but 25%. So two different set of outputs are there, but it's still detecting as dog. Let's say if we give uh, leopard, So it's cheetah 48% and leopard 47%. Now with this model, let's see what it's doing. So it's cheetah 68, 62% and leopard 36% because it's resonant 60, uh, 50 model. You can also use, let, let's say I, I'll use a different one model. So let's say from Keras, I'm going for applications and I'm going for inception V3 model. And I'm saying import inception v3. So as soon as I say a model 3 equals to inception v3. And if I go, if this weights are not downloaded in your system, it will start downloading this weight. And see here, the, the weights are downloading in the specific folders, which is in users.keras. And in that you have all the models downloaded. I'm starting it right now because I don't need this model right away. I'm stopping the execution of this. Hope you understand this. We'll continue this code in the, the next like, uh, video session. Thank you. Hello, let's continue our session on tree training model with coding. Now, in the above, in the previous example, what we saw is we have our own images, but the classes were of the existing pre-trained model. Now, in this section, what we will do is we will train this model, ImageNet model, with our data set. So let's say what data set I'll use is four class data set initially. This four class data set zip file is with you and it's basically having a cat, 25 images of cat, 25 images of dog, 25 images of human and 25 images of horse. This is what we want to do. So it, it's only having 100 images, 25 for each category. We will train the model each. So our last layer, which was initially having 1000 classes will now only have Four classes. This is what we want to do. We want to leave the entire section of the above model as it is. We want to change this last dense layer model only. But before doing that, what we will do is we need to convert this image data into appropriate uh, data set uh, numpy array to feed into the model. So let's get started. The, the things that I'll need initially is Let's say I have a data underscore. I'm, I'm creating a data path. And let's say that data path is now right now F colon four class. This is where my data is. Okay. And it's actually in four class slash slash data section. No, 
it's directly so it's not in a data section it's directly available and in that all the directories are there each directory is like cat is a directory dog is a directory and in that the cat folder are there so first i need to get the all the directories so i'm saying os dot list dir means i'm getting all the directories of the data underscore path so it's actually four directories so let's say if i say print data underscore dir underscore list so you can see it's listing four directories are there in the folder four classes once this is done i'm creating an image list i'm creating actually an image data list which will having the all the data initially it's empty and i will iterate each image from the directory so what i'll do is for the data set i'm saying in data dir list so it has five directories it is having the four directories and i'm saying image underscore list is actually os dot again list directory And I'm fetching uh, path, so I need a data path, data underscore path, this data underscore because I need a proper path of an image. So I'm saying it's double slash plus data set. So what it's actually doing is it's converting the folder f uh, the data set will have a cat dog horse and this so it's actually converting into f colon slash four classes slash cat and then slash dog and likewise so it's getting all the uh, image list directories and from each of this direct files i am saying uh, let's convert it into the proper image numpy uh, if you have a doubt let let's see i'll see what it's displaying image underscore list before doing this you can see it's getting all the images all the images dog one dog two dog three dog three and likewise and horse 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 and before that it's cat 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 because unless this full path is not made it will not retrieve this file. If I only write data set, it will not get all this file. Now I want to read each of this file. So from the image list, each file will come into an IMG. And then what we did in the above section, similar things we will do. So I'm creating an image path, which is again is this data path. And then finally, IMG. So now it's full path of the image. It's not only cat one, it's not only a cat one dot JPG, but it's F colon slash four classes slash cat slash cat one dot JPG. This is what this path got. And then again, what we'll do is we'll convert it into, we are loading this image. And again, we will give the target size as our pre-trained model size uh, 224. And then I'm saying image to image image array, and I'm converting into IMG into X and again 
expanding x, preprocessing x. expanding it and then pre-processing it and finally this is one image so I am adding this image into the data list so now image list will have all the image and finally this image data which we have uh, sorry the all the image we have we want to convert it into an umpire data so this is what it will do and let's say I am printing what this image underscore data is so once we execute it you can see it's uh, converting all this data into a specific format now let me display the shape of this what the shape is because we need a proper shape so its shape is 100 images and each one is having this format now we don't need this one because uh, our data size will be 100 images of 24 cross 224 cross 3 so now I am rolling it so image data is np dot roll axis and I'm saying it's an image data now if I display it you see we, we have rolled image uh, rolled the index we have rolled it like this 1 and 0 indexes and then I'm again saying image data is image data of zero. So this all is same value. So once this is done, our image size is now uh, data side is converted into this. So we got the actual shape. Now we don't know what this label is all about because this is only data. We have gathered all the data. So now we have to give the labels also So to do that. I'm saying there are basically four classes this we will need later stage and number of samples how many samples are there 100 so I can say 100 and the labels I'll give is np dot right now once I'm creating a once that is 100 once I'm creating and the data type that I'm using is in 64 because we need to create an label classes also and then I'm saying initially now if I say print labels it's all 100 ones we, we don't want to do that we want to say that labels from 0 to 24 25 excluding 25 so it's 0 to 24 is 0 label 0 is our cat then dog and then human horse and then human horse and then human uh, you will find it over here it's basically taking it into the sorry hum, instead of human it's a, a rider so it's it's taking this sequentially cat, dog, horse and human. So then I am saying from 25 including 25 to 50 my class 1 and then class 2 and then class 3. So it's from 50 to 75 and from 75 to 100 all these three. And let's say I am giving names also. So names is, I'm giving just a name, names of the label cats. I can have any names over here, dogs. And then it's horses. And then finally it's, let's say human instead of writers, I'm saying human. The name of the file doesn't matter, it's just a data. So once this is done, we created a 
names of the label. Now I need to convert it into a one hot encoding. So for that I'll use uh, the Keras utility. So for that what I'm doing is from Keras utils import np underscore utils this actually is used for converting our labels into one hot encoding so let's say i'm saying y is y is our target classes now so y is np utils and i'm converting it to to categorical there is one hot encoding i'm saying labels need to convert it and the number of classes are so once I do this we have a Y which is having a one chord encoding base targets so this 0 0 0 and 1 is my last class 25 then it will be the third class second class and finally the first class so it's this is called one hot encoding if you have a problem in understanding one hot encoding please go into some sections where you can easily find out one hot encoding now our x is in this sequence uh, our our data that is image underscore data list this is in the sequence that is first 25 classes is of cat uh, first 25 data is of cat then dog and then human sorry then horse and then human and similarly why so now we need to shuffle it to so for shuffling also we will need let's say a shuffle function from np utils so what i'll do is and it's actually the shuffle function is in sklearn so i'm saying from sklearn in utils import shuffle to get to make our data appropriate so what i'm doing is i'm calling a shuffle function i'm saying shuffle my image data as well as my y and i'm giving the random state you can give a different random state so once we do this, okay, shuffle is not found. So once we run it, now if we display Y, it's not in a sequence. See, the data is now shuffled. Initially, it was not shuffled. And now let's convert, let's convert this our 100 data into train trace split. So for that, we will need from sklearn again, cross validations to convert into train test split so this is a class that we will need and i'm saying i'm uh, having x train y train x test y train y test and i'm calling train test split i'm saying split x and y into train and test splits with test size as 0.2 and i'm saying random state as 2 so once we do this, our x, y, which is, uh, let's say if I say x dot shape, it's 100 data. Once I run this, okay, it's saying that this test test split is validated. Instead of this, you have to use model selection. We can also do that, but it's fine for us. And if you see in variable explorer here, now we have our x test as 20 record and x train as 80 record. Similarly, our y test and y train is y train is 80 
y test is 20. So this is we have converted our data into an appropriate data that we need to feed into our next model. We will continue building a model in the next section. Hello, let's continue our course on transfer learning. In this section, we are going to modify the existing ResNet model to train for our four class model. That our four class are cat, dog, horse and human. So let's see first what is this ResNet model is all about. So model 2 dot summary if I display. You can see it is having a last layer as dense layer and it is having 1000 classes. So instead of this 1000 classes, we want our four classes. And to do this, what I need to do is what uh, this after this average pooling, we have this flattened layer. So after this average pooling, we will add our flattened layer uh, having 2048 data. So to do that, first of all, uh, I'll say, let's say the layer that I, I want to, I'm interested in is the average pooling. So model dot get layer. Now, what is this model? So it's in from keras dot models import model. And this is not that we want model two dot get layer which layer we want is average pooling layer avg underscore pool layer this one this layer we want so avg underscore pool layer and output of that we want what is an output of that 2048 no so i got the avg pool layer and that is in that now i am adding a layer flatten layer flatten layer and the name of the layer that is I'm giving is name is flatten from the last layer and again this flatten is not there so we have to Get all these layers, different layers. So let's say from keras dot layers import flatten. We also need dense layer, so we are also adding a dense. So once uh, this flatten layer is added, our final is a dense layer. He, right now it has one thousand. Uh, neurons is an output you can say we want only four so that four is stored in our number of classes we have four num classes as number of classes four the function that for activation we are using is a softmax layer and the name of the output layer is that I'm giving is output layer you can give any name here and that I want to add into an X. Once I done, I did this. So I have now three layers, this last layer, which is having the all above layers. X, after that I have added to the last layer, I have added an X that is flatten layer. And behind X, I have added a dense layer with four as an output. Now I'm, I want to create a custom model based on this. So this custom model, We'll take some input. Our output is fixed, this. So we need to define what an input it will take. So to do that, let's say I'm saying from keras dot layers import input. And I'm saying image input as input. And the shape of my input is what? Our shape of input is 224 cross 3. This is my input size. So we have an input defined, an output defined, 
So now let's build the model. So say my custom model is an rather it's, I can say custom ResNet model is model. This is the class we are using model. And in that I need to define inputs as major underscore input and outputs as out. Once I do this, and then I'm saying custom, let's say, just execute this. Okay, so it's saying that the following previous layers were accessed without issue this, meaning that it has uh, the the top layer was not included so I need to change slightly this model 2 so I'm saying model 2 is equal to resnet 50 and in that I'm saying input tensor is equal to image underscore input So I need to take this value over here because I need to define the input tensor that I'm giving. Input tensor and I'm saying include top as true and I'm using weights. Here also you can define weights also image net weight. That is my model 2. Because input tensor was not defined, this is it's having an error list. So we are now defining because when we created a ResNet above here, we created a default ResNet without an input tensor. Once this is done, I can say this, and then this, and then this. So now the model is built, and now I can display what is it having dot summary so if you see summary it is having 4 and then 220048 from here we have changed to this and this and if I display model 2 dot summary you have 1000 last layer and for our cases we have 4 only now, once this model is built, we need to compile this model. So let's say I'm saying custom ResNet model is equal to custom ResNet model dot compile. Sorry, it's it's not needed to have equal to sign. So we are just compiling it, yeah, right? So we are saying compile. Now here uh, you should know what the loss is and what sort of a loss. So I'm saying categorical cross entropy loss we are using. And the optimizer you can use maybe Adam or RMS prop. Let's say I'm using RMS prop as an optimizer. Uh, other parameters that also needed are accuracy, that is matrix, which matrix we, we are going to use. So it's matrix equal to accuracy let's say and now once this is done we need to fit this model and that is let's say 
custom resident model dot fit and we will fit it on x underscore train and y underscore train the batch size which we will give could be let's say 20 record at a time the number of epochs let's say I, I'm going to use is 20 you can have more epochs also let's say 40 epochs and verbose is the detail that we want to display and we want to do a validation based on accuracy and loss so this is what we are okay sorry the validation data is this validation data is x underscore test and y underscore test and in the next video we will compile we will fit this model because it may take some time thank you uh, hello and uh, let's continue our model so in the previous video what we did is we, we take a uh, ResNet model we extracted its average pooling layer its output that is flattened layer we added the flattened layer in that in the uh, average pooling layers and then finally behind that we have added our dense layer with four classes and the activation function is softmax layer and the name of the layer we have given an output layer so if you see the summary we we have already seen it in previous model but it's for better understanding so output is four now we, we need to compile this model so we are checking what uh, loss we will use to update the weights the optimizer the, we are using rms prop we can also use adam and the matrix that i'm using is an accuracy matrix and then finally, uh, we, we, we want to fit this model on train data. We are taking batch size 20, epochs 40. Uh, right now for, so now let's run this code. So now as soon as we compile the model and start it uh, fitting the model, it will show us an epoch based accuracy so batch size is actually a 20 we, we will uh, see some output layers uh, later in this as right now i'm not running it on the gpu the execution process is slightly slow here. So here right now you can see the loss is 1.73 and the accuracy is 0 0.15. So here you can see the accuracy is now 38% in the first epoch itself. In the second epoch, you can see the accuracy has increased to 65% and that is, that is training accuracy. And in, in the previous epoch, the validation accuracy was about 25%. So once this all the epochs, that is 40 epochs completes, its accuracy will increase definitely. So I'm just stopping this layer and I'll show you the and results after completing all this training when you hello welcome when you see the the next uh, model you you when you will run the next code in the series what you will see is that some downloading is happening so all the keras model pre-trained weights model are downloaded in the section that is user the the user machine is there here and in that you have a folder called dot keras and in that the models are stored in models directory so right now i have downloaded resnet 50 tf 
color that is this model and non top model also uh, in the video i'll discuss what this non top model is there in the next video and then vcc 16 and vcc 19 model and resnet model so basically i have three models which is if uh, ResNet 50, which is 16 and which is 19. These three models are already downloaded. As soon as I'll go with inception model, it will start downloading. In your case, if you have not downloaded the ResNet model or VGC 16 model, it will start downloading. So let it start. And as soon as it is complete downloading, you will find the weights over here. Initially, the weights will not be over here. Hope you understand this. Enjoy the execution. classification so this data set is available in Kaggle and uh, I have put the link in the source section that is 10 monkey species uh, once you extract this zip file you will get this folder training and validation folder in training folder you will find 10 folders n0 n1 n2 and likewise and each of these has a specific image of the monkeys and these are the 10 different classes of the monkeys so let's continue our programming uh, first of all I'll be setting my path let's say I have stored my data into monkey classes so I'm setting this path so now if I type os dot get current working directory Sorry, I have to import OS. And if I do it, it shows a DMH monkey classes. This is right now my current working directory folder. Now, first of all, I need some of the classes. That is, let's say import numpy as NP. I need to import import OS for extracting the files. And to display the files, uh, I'll use matplotlib dot plot as plt and for transfer learning model I'll be using ResNet so from this import ResNet 50 from Keras dot application dot vgg 16 I'm going to import vgg 16 and from keras dot applications dot inception I'm going to import inception so these are the three uh, models that I'll be working with uh, to check what is an output so let's say uh, I'm in, uh, creating an F model and I, I want to display what is the output of means what is the structure of this model so once I do this let's say I'll import this hmm. once I run this you will find that the ResNet model has a specific structure you can see this is a ResNet structure it has various uh, layers convolutional layers and then it has a batch normalization and convolutional layer and activation functions and so many layers are there and these are the total parameters that can be that are there and out of this these are all trainable parameters more than 2 crore 55 lakhs trainable uh, parameters are there now uh, let's say in the uh, folder that is in this folder I have uh, extracted some of the files I have copied from this training folder some of the files and renamed it as monkey1, monkey2, monkey3 and monkey4 and let's say uh, I am creating an image path and I am giving a name as monkey1.jpg so I want to see 
what class it sees by directly giving the ResNet model. Uh, to, to, um, to, import, to load an image, I need keras.preprocessing import image and I also need keras dot applications dot image map utils from the image map utils I want to import preprocess unit and decode prediction. Now first of all I, what I'll do is I'll say uh, image dot load image and I'm going to give an image underscore path and I will give a target size also I want to restrict the image to some specific numbers so this is my target size and then I'll convert my image to image to array and once it's converted into image array I'll convert it, it into numpy array and I'll give an x as an input. So and finally to feed the data into the already trained model we need to process the data. So let's say I'll display what is the shape of this and after pre-processing what is the shape. So let's execute this code. It's saying image is not found okay because I haven't imported this image is imported. And it says target size is not there is equal to this so it's loaded and it's when if so you, you can see the shape is same but it's processing it for to give it to the input data and now finally what I'll do is I'll predict the model using model dot predict I'll predict x and that is my let's say features it's actually a class so let's say we'll predict it so it says that it wants okay uh, the dimension of the image should be uh, I need to expand the direction because the direction the image the input dimension should be like this because I'm supplying one image. So I have to add this index. So I'm saying np dot expand dimensions and I'll say x and x is equal to zero. So I'm adding one axis into it. Once I do it, now you can see that this is my dimension. So now if I run it it will predict it and if I display features only so it will have so many values and this all value is a probability of each of the class so in the in, in the ResNet model if you see the last layer is 1000 so for each class so it has an index of 1000 it's the feature size is 1000 you can see over here so for each class it's giving the prediction. Now let's say I want to decode its prediction. So I'm saying print predicted class and I'm saying decode prediction and I'm giving features and I'm saying give only top 5 accuracy. So now here you can see it's giving TT, it's a monkey type it's also a squirrel monkey, it's Madagascar cat, so it's giving a different name of this monkey. Similarly, if I do it for monkey 2, here you can see it's giving Indri 42%, Mongoose 23%, TT 9% and likewise 
even if you give it 1k3, so it's actually not identifying it into the, the predefined 10 classes. It is having 1000 classes and from that it's identifying it. So in the next section, I can also display it uh, data uh, means image also and for that I'll use IMG. So you can see the actual image is this and for that it uh, this uh, detecting with 99% accuracy this. Now we can also change the model also. Let's say if I am saying instead of WaveNet, I have to check it with VGG16 and then if I predict it with VGG16, now you can see again VGG16 has 1000 classes and it's again de detecting with 99% accuracy patterns. If I do it for image 2, you can see this is an image and it's displaying with 43% accuracy marmoset. If I do it with ResNet, it will not be marmoset with 43% accuracy, but it will be something else. It's injury 43%. So this is an end of using directly the pre-trained model. I can also check inception model also. Let's say inception model, I loaded it. I'm predicting it with inception version V3. And uh, it will also detect some new different accuracy. So here you can see it's this uh, with 90% accuracy detecting as flat form. So it's actually not a flat form, it's an monkey class. So now what we want to do is we want to predict, we want to retrain our model, we want to retrain our model fit for the classes given here for this 10 classes. Hope you have enjoyed this section till the point. Hello, uh, let's continue our uh, transfer learning model for classification of 10 monkeys. In the previous section, what we did is we have an image and we loaded this image, we convert it into an, an array, we expanded the dimensions to make it to fit into the model. We process the inputs and we then finally predict it. This predicted gives 1000 probabilities of different classes. So we decoded it with top 5 accuracies. If I give it to top 2, it will give, show me top 2 accuracies. Now in this section, what we are going to do is, we will load the images from this all 10 folders. And to do that, first of all, let's say uh, again, I'm saying what's my current working directory. So let's say OS dot get current working directory. So it says so I'm saying path is now let's say OS dot get current working directory. This is a path that I have set. And my data path is let's say is path plus my training files so it's in training folder see here it's in training folder monkey classes and in the training folder my training data is there so i'm setting this path and each of this path has a directories so i'm saying data directories is os dot list dir and in that i give my data path folder so it will extract all the 10 directories from the list so if i display it data underscore directory you can see 10 directory list is there now now i want to iterate this and i'll, I'll show store the data into image data list and the labels for each of the class i'll store it in the labels so i've created two list and let's say i'm saying for data in 
data underscore dir that is directories all directories and image list I will have is os dot list dirs and from that what I need is we have our data path plus we have the data so this this section will convert the total path as dmih monkey classes slash training slash n0 and then n1 and then n2 and likewise uh, let's say for your understanding i'll display it image list from each of this it will get the lim image files and finally let's say i'm displaying print loading images of data now i want to iterate each of the files one by one and to load it into this uh, let's run this code initially so you can see loading images of n0 n1 n2 and n3 so now what I, what we want is we want the image list each images we want and we, uh, i need a path also image path and that path again we will build using this plus image so we got a full path of each file now i want to load uh, again similar code that we did over here and here again it will be image path so this is done again we need to convert it into an array and i need to again pre-process it i will not be adding a dimension over here because i'll be adding it into a list and so it will automatically add that dimension in it so i'm saying append and i'm appending x and for label what i'm doing is If you see the name of a folder is it's n0 n1 n2 n3 so if i say data of one it will give me 0 1 2 3 4 likewise so that is my labels zero label one label two level three level four level x likewise and that's it so if i process this okay we need to add this first and then to execute this says that loading images of n1 n0 n1 n2 n3 and likewise so it, it has so many images now once this processing is done what we will do is we'll convert this entire image data list into an array so it's image data list converting into numpy array once it's converted to numpy array uh, uh, let me display the site uh, first of all uh, I will execute this code and if I see the shape of this it says that it has 1098 total images and this is the dimension of each of the images now to stop means uh, rather than doing this iteration every time I will store this data into a file so for that I'll use a np save and I'm saying train data dot 
numpy file and I'm saying image data you store it similarly you store labels also train labels and in so once you execute it it will store this it will create the file so here you can see we have train data mpy file and train labels mpy file i executed it previously so it's showing this data also other files also i have stored it uh, so let's say the files are stored it. so next time simply what you have to do is you have to just load the data so let me write the logic of loading data also so I'm image data is np dot load and i'll simply and i can say labels equal to np dot load and that's it so let's see whether it's working or not so let's say we have image uh, data this is there so i'm removing it and we have labels also so i'm removing it and again we are loading it with this command so now again we have image data and labels back so we don't have to do this processing again and again hope you understand this code uh, in the next section we will convert this data uh, means labels into categorical data that is one called encoding hope you hope you enjoy it hi uh, let's continue our uh, transfer learning for classification of 10 monkey classes in the previous section what we did is uh, we had a training folder which contains 10 folders of each classes and so we got the 10 folders names using this code os dot list directories then we want to load all the images into image data list and all the labels into label sections so for this we use this code the scores were orderly understood by you so we are loading in each images converting into image to array we pre-processing it and then finally we are adding each image into image data list we are adding it into uh, using append and we are appending the labels using data of zero what this data of zero is our uh, folder name is n7 n4 and likewise so data of one is four five six it's what it will give like this uh, and that could be seen over here so now instead of n0 we have 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 2 3 4 all these files and if I, uh, we save this data into using save function and we can also load this data using load np dot load function uh, now in this section what we will do is we'll convert this labels into one hot encoding that is a 10 labels are there and if it's zero label then it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and lastly it will be one if it's label one then it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and then finally zero so that is called one hot encoding uh, so let's do it so for that let's say we have total 10 classes so i'm saying number of classes 10 let's say uh, in future i may need number of samples so how many samples we have so that is image data dot shape of zero so now number of class is 10 and number of sample is 1098 that we got it now it's the names of the various classes is n0 n1 n2 n3 n4 n5 
I can store using the labels also. So I can instead of this, I can write this line over here also names dot append data. And initially I can say names equals to blank. But as this code is already executed, I'm sticking it to this section. Fine, so we have given labels. Now there is uh, NP utilities in Keras processing. So I'm saying from Keras dot applications dot Keras dot preprocessing dot so it's Keras dot utils. Import and putils, and I give now label y uh, np utils dot to categorical, and I'm saying labels and number of classes. So now if I execute this, now we have a y variable with one hot encoding. So we got one hot encoding. We have now X and Y. So let's say right now this data is not shuffled yet. So I need to shuffle them also. So again, this shuffle is in Keras utilities. I'm saying shuffle image data image underscore data and Y you shuffle it and I'm giving random state true so now I shuffle it it's not shuffles it's shuffle so once execute this So we have this shuffle and now we are doing, so now we got X and Y, two small variables with shuffle data. Uh, if you double click on it, you cannot see four dimensional data, so it will give an error. Uh, this is three dimensional data is not supported and this is you can see it's Y. So we have all the data shuffled instead of in sequence class zero, class one, it's now different classes. All data is shuffled now. Uh, in the next section, we will uh, okay. Before this, let's split the data. So again, we have in import sklearn dot model selection from sklearn import train test splits. So now here I'll create x train x traced y train y train and y test using train test split there i'll give x comma y and i'm saying test size is 0.2 and again you 
bracket saying test and so it's not defined so I can execute it so now we have four classes you can see 80% data is in X train 80% data is in X train and 80% 20% data is in X test so this is an end of preparation of the data hello and let's continue our monkey classification in this section we will use the ResNet pre-train model to train our data on it uh, in the previous section what we see is uh, we we converted our labels into a one hot encoding using np utils dot to categorical data we got now hot one hot encoding in y then we shuffled our data so that we have a, a random data in training and testing and finally uh, using train trace split of sklearn uh, model selection we converted uh, our data x x and y into x train and x trace that is 80 percent data in x train and y train and 20 percent data in x test and y test now in this section what we will do is we will use the will use the inbuilt resnet model so let's say the image input that we are going to give in our file is 224 224 cross 3 and so what is this input so it's a layer you can say so it's from keras dot layers import input we will also need other layers but right now we are sticking to this only so we have defined now input layers and let's say I am creating my first model so model 1 I am saying using ResNet my input tensor is image input that is my input tensor I'm going to give. I'm going to give uh, input top as right now true. That indicates that I want to add the, uh, the last layer also. And the weights that I'm going to use is of ImageNet. And finally, I'm displaying the summary of it. Okay, sorry, uh, the shape we have to keep shape is this. We have given the shape and we are going to execute it and we will see the summary of the ResNet model with top as true. So here you can see this is the value 20, uh, 2,55,000 and now let's see what I, I'll do is I'll extract the last layer so I'm saying last layer is model one dot get the output of average pulling layer the output of this 2048 so the, the last thing that we are getting is 2048 and after that we will instead of classifying into 1000 classes we will classify it into 10 classes only. So now first of all I will add the flatten layer so that is also a layer that I will need flatten so I am saying flatten uh, I am giving the name of the layer let us say flatten and it should be added at the 
last layer. Now, after that, I am adding one more layer that is the dense layer with not 1000 classes but with 10 classes. So, I am saying add a dense layer and the number of classes is 10. The activation function that I want to use is let us say softmax because it is going to detect and the name is output layer let us say I am giving and it should be added at the x. And once this layer I will build, now I am creating custom ResNet model using model and I am giving the input is equal to image input that I have to give. The output is out only and now if you see it is 2048 flatten layer after average pooling 2048 that is flatten layer 2048 and then it is finally dense 1000. So now if I display custom ResNet model dot summary it will have a different data. Still, some problem is there. Let me see. Yes, it's right. Flatten is not defined. So, this I have to execute again. Once I define the flatten, and here there is a comma missing. Once I do this, okay, we, we need a model also. So from Keras, so we need to add this model also from Keras dot models. And so once I do this, you can see. After average pooling, we have flattened layer with 2048 and now our output layer is with 10 neurons, you can say. And so we have now prepared our model. Now let us make the layers into the custom ResNet models dot layers, all the layers except the last layer as trainable false. The last layer that is custom resident model dot layers last layer as training well, whether it is true or false. So once you execute it, you can see the last layer is trainable. That's we want it. And now we'll compile this model. So, custom ResNet model dot compile. Our loss function that we will use is categorical cross entropy. The optimizer that we are going to use is Adam and matrix we are going to use is an accuracy matrix so let's compile this model
categorical cross entropy. So we have prepared uh, our custom raised net model. We, we make all the layers untrainable except the last layer and then we compile it. In the next section we will fit this model and we will see the accuracy of the model. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, Let us continue with our monkey classification model. In the previous mod, uh, lecture, we built the ResNet uh, model. Uh, we extracted the last uh, average pooling layer from it. We added the flatten layer into it. Then we added a dense layer, which 10 classes only. Then we built them our ResNet model. We made all the layers untrainable and then we finally compiled the model. So now using this model we will test our, uh, we will fit our model. Uh, so we will use fit function and we will use the data as x train and y train. The number of batch size let us say I am going to use is 32 maybe random epochs. I am going to use 10 let us say 10 epochs I am going to check. and the verbose is that the information that I want to display is verbose mode 1 and to check the validation of my model I am using validation data as x underscore test and y underscore test uh, and now let us see how the fitting is happening. Let us say uh, we want to store this model into a uh, history, uh, the fitted model. X train, Y train, batch size. It is the problem is of matrix here you can see uh, so I have changed it to into proper name sorry for typo. Now once we execute it you can see training sample it is taking 872 initial and first epoch only we got a 54 percent accuracy validation accuracy is 83 percent and uh, the model is quite impressive here you can see it is check going beyond. 93-94% in validation test. So after 12 epochs you can see the accuracy is 99% in training and in validation it is 94%. Now as we know that we have also the validation data. So we'll, we, we are going to load this validation data. Uh, that is the folder I was talking about initially. This is the data where we have unknown images. So we'll load all this data and then we'll see the accuracy in the perspective of that. So uh, let's load that data first. So I'm copying this same training load data func uh, only. Uh, I can make a function also, but for simplicity, I'm just copy pasting it. Instead of uh, the training folder, now I'll.
high. Uh, let's continue our uh, monkey classification code. Now, in the next section, uh, in this section, uh, in the previous section, what we did is we fit our model and then we load we loaded uh, the validation data and we have evaluated this model against the validation data and the accuracy was 94 percent and then we plotted our learning graph of validation loss and validation uh, training loss and tra uh, similar training accuracy and validation accuracy now in this section i will I'll, I'll see uh, we'll see uh, uh, I'll create a basic model, uh, CNN model, and see how it behaves with our data without any transfer learning. So let's say I'm saying import. Uh, first of all, uh, let's say I'll, I'll be using uh, from Keras dot models. I'll use sequential model. So let's say I'm saying sequential, and then I'm, I'll say model dot add. I am adding. Let's say I need to add some keras dot layers. I'll need dense layer. We have already imported, so we know we, we need convolutional two layers and max pooling layers, two dimensional. And let's say I have created. Uh, I'm adding a convolutional two D layer. I'm adding this is uh, I'm not discussing this all what is kernel size I'm just creating one basic model activation I will be applying is relu and again the input shape is 224 to 243 okay. and and likewise I'll add some of the models uh, other layers so let's say I have added one more conventional layer then I am doing a max pooling layer and then one more conventional layer. Finally, I am doing, I am flattening it, uh, adding a dense layer. And finally, I need to add one more dense layer with 20, uh, 10 as the number of classes. And the activation function I will be using is softmax layer. And uh, Finally, I am applying, let's say I am compiling the model. So I am saying model dot compile. And the optimizer maybe I am using is Adam. And the loss that I'm using, uh, so I can I can use that same above line. For so this is our model, and I'm doing this. And in the next section. Uh, so let's okay first compile it I'm doing it it's working fine this is also okay there is some potential argument missing kernel size is missing we added this layer we are adding this also Finally, okay, so for Keras, I'm writing it differently, that's why, because I have written it like this. So once I am adding this, for sorry, because it's re-executed. And finally, 
actually I'm compiling it so compilation is success in the next uh, video we will fit this model and see how the QRC behaves hello welcome and uh, let's fit this model so I'm again fitting it again giving X train Y train and same batch processing and you can see uh, the accuracy is right now at uh, fourth epoch it's around 48 percent so after 10th iteration 12th iteration you can see the validation uh, validation uh, uh, training accuracy is 97 percent but validation accuracy is just 44 percent so so if we again draw this graph you will find uh, it's having a huge loss see the accuracy is not increasing that much because we are using our custom model similarly the loss is also quite high in the our custom built model we can add some normalization uh, regularization dropout and then we can see if our uh, model behaves proper or not uh. This is an end of this uh, model and in the next section we will see the further execution of transfer learning codes. Hi and thank you very much for going through this course. If you have any issue you can contact me on my personal email address is mosin83 at gmail.com we have few optional videos like catalog classifiers where from scratch we have given uh, understanding of how to load the images how to load uh, transform it into proper data set and then train this model on uh, train this images on model like basic cnn model and then applying and resnet model and vgg16 model so this is an optional videos if you like it you you should go through that video uh, videos also and uh, we haven't discussed any of the other models like object detection model YOLO or a BERT model for, from NLP or for segmentation detection mask RCNN and for specific image segmentation in medical imaging unit model we haven't discussed in this course because it requires a lot of uh, image annotations. So we will be uh, in a production phase of developing this one more course which specifically focuses on YOLO NLP mask RCNN and unit model specifically and once again this course will be free course thank you very much hope you enjoy the course hello and let's continue our course on transfer learning in this section we are going to use a pre-trained models few pre-trained models to classify some of our images using a python program so let's get started in this section we will use keras pre-trained models so first of all i'm going to import keras applications and in that I'm going to use let's say VGC 16 model and from that I am importing VGG 16. So what is this Keras applications? So this Keras application is actually a deep learning models, deep learning models available with pre-trained weights on ImageNet data sets. And this Keras models are compatible with TensorFlow, KNO and CNTK environments, uh, frameworks. In this uh, Keras application, there is one model which is called exception, which is only uh, compatible with TensorFlow. So let's say I am using first VGC16 model. The other thing that I'm, I'll need is Keras dot preprocessing, and from that I'll be using image. So here, this image uh, will be used for converting our 
data into array this is image into array uh, and it's also used for data augmentation also the other thing that we will need is conversion of array to numpy array and that's why we will need numpy array we will also need os for handling the various paths and two important uh, things that we will need is so this imaginet utility has two important functions which is called pre-processing of inputs so whatever input we are giving it needs to be converted into appropriate format of data that is if it's 224 cross 224 cross 3 channel that is 3 colors so it helps in converting the image into appropriate formats similarly uh, when we discuss the uh, ImageNet classes in TensorFlow for Poets uh, I gave an example that there, there are so many classes and uh, this classes we don't know which specific classes has which specific model. So at the time when these labels are there we want to convert this table this example suppose the the model will say that it's a 14 class so we don't know what this 40 class so we need to convert it into a prediction proper prediction and that's why we will need a decode prediction. So actually it will decode the prediction into appropriate readable, human readable class. So right now let's start with this uh, few important uh, libraries and uh, as we have seen in the previous section, uh, I have put my test images into f colon slash test underscore images where I have images like cat, dog, Obama, my, my photo itself, leopard photo and such various photos are there. So we'll need that for conversion. So we are doing that. So we are going into that test directory for testing whether the pre-trained model actually detects our classes properly or not. Now, the first thing that we we'll, let's say we will do is, let's say I'm going for, I'm creating a model based on VGG16. So I'm creating a model. Once the model is created, let's say I want to, let's first execute this line of code. If there any error, oh, sorry. There is an error. It's saying I forgot. Sorry, uh, it's using a skeptic one, so we need to give two slashes. Okay, done. Let's execute which is 16. So the model is created of the pre trained model, and from this, let's say what I'll do is I, I want to print some summary of the model what actually this model is all about. So here you can see the VGC16 model has this architecture. So it's starting with, it's taking 224 cross 224, three channel images, and then it has a convolutional layer, then a convolutional layer, then a max pooling layer, and likewise it has huge number of uh, various layers. And finally, if you see the last layer, it has this 1000. What this 1000 is saying here, it's a softmax layers and it, its output is 1000. So it's, it's basically detecting 1000 classes, classification in 1000 classes. And this 1000 classes, just now I have said, these are the classes because it's ImageNet, we are training on the ImageNet. So these are the various classes. There's a daisy and corn and on and hip and earth star and bullet and leopard and cheetah and all, all sort of once this is done let's say uh, and from this you can see right now we, we are using a basic model so total parameters are this and all are trainable 
So you can fine tune this model for further and that example we'll see in further section. Now let's have an image. So let's say I have, I'm creating an image. Let's say I'm saying it's a cat. I think it, it is cat two or let's say it's an leopard. So there is a leopard image in my database, leopard.jpg. I want to check which in which class it's identifying the leopard. Once uh, I got this, so now what I need to do is using this image class, I need to convert, uh, I need to load this image. So I'm loading an image, I'm giving an image path and my target size could be, because the original image in the data set could be of any size and I want to convert it into 224 cross 224 because my model is taking, because my model is taking the image of this and three channel. It's actually three channels. So we, we are not specifying a channel. Once this is done, we have loaded the image in IMG. Now we need to convert this into an image, uh, an array. So using image to array, we are converting this image pixel data into an array. Now we need to convert this into a proper shape. Let's see if I saying display X. Spelling mistake of leopard. So let me see what is an image name there. Oh, test images. And its name is Leopard. Spelling mistake. Forgot the spelling of a leopard. That's so. This is what the image uh, data is. Now I need to convert it into a specific format. So I'm using an NP and I'm expanding the dimensions of x and I'm going for x is 0. And then finally, this needs to be converted into appropriate dimension. So I'm converting it this and if I finally if I print print x, this is what now our dimension of the image is. This is needed to feed the data into proper format. Now this x is actually um, our pixel data in three channels. So now let's using a model, let's predict what the X is giving output. So it's giving some values, okay? And we need to decode it. So let's say I'm saying print predicted class because this X, this features, Let's display these features also so you have some understanding. So see, th this is giving an 100 records, uh, sorry, 1000 records base value. So now what I'm doing is predicted class and I'm predicting the proper feature. So once I run this, you can see it's predicting that it's cheetah with 48% accuracy. And it's also predicting second is leopard with 47% accuracy. And it's giving some numbers. It's also detecting it, it's Jaguar as 0.1%. Uh, uh, it's also detecting it's uh, Ferrari chicken and likewise. Let's say, now here, if I say two, it's actually top two accuracy. So it's top two accuracy is leopard and cheetah. And if it's detecting right, then it's part of a successful accuracy. If in top two accuracy, if the cheetah is not, or leopard is not detected, then we can say that the accuracy is failing in top two. So here, this two indicates top two accuracy. Yeah, if I give top 5, it gives me top 5 accuracy. 
So it's actually a cheetah and it's uh, detecting, uh, it's actually a leopard and detecting a leopard with 47% accuracy. If I give it the name of, let's say, in our data set, we have car also. I need to run all this for, to get this data again and again and finally this so you can see it's saying that it's sports card with 40% accuracy car wheel 23% accuracy racer 16 so it's having some sort of accuracy here <coughs> now let's say I'll do it for cat I'm not printing now these things. Directly going for a class and it's, you can see it's tabby. So it's again a cat, Egyptian cat, 14%, tiger cat, it's 12% and it's detecting almost all four cats. Similarly, we have dogs also. So you can see it's collie, it's a dog, it's tibet and mastiff, it's also a dog. Shelter land, sheep dog, it's dog. So it's detecting as a dog for majority of the classes using VGC 16. Let's say uh, I want to test one more model. So I'll say from Keras applications dot uh, ResNet, let's say, and I'm importing ResNet 50 model. We have discussed the ResNet is provided by Microsoft, VGC is by Oxford. And now let's say I'm saying it's my new model, model two, and I'm saying ResNet 50. And uh, if you see, uh, we can pass parameters also over here. So let's say I'm passing some parameter which is called include top. It's true. So what this include top is that the last layer in the model, if you see the summary, it's a dense layer, last dense layer. So do you want to use the, the features till this layer or this layer or this layer? So when you are saying include top true, so it will download the weight which are part of, which are covering the last dense layer. If I say false, it will not use, means it will use uh, weights till this point okay so right now we are saying true and it's two different files available uh, in the, the in the models now if if i go for this it's our model 2 and it's done so now if i display it's summary you can see it has different number of parameters but again it is having 1000 last dense layer is 1000 so that is detecting 1000 classes and it has all these different model retained different model now let's test test how my model is detecting the last one which was a dog so in this Okay, we have predicted, but uh, we also need to display it. So it's again Tibetan territory. And in, in this case, let's say if I'm doing this to using VGZ 16, so you can see it's Kohli 19%, but he is saying Tibetan territory, but 25%. So two different set of outputs are there, but it's still detecting as dog. Let's say if we give uh, leopard, So it's cheetah 48% and leopard 47%. Now with this model, let's see what it's doing. So it's cheetah 68, 62% and leopard 36% because it's resonant 60, uh, 50 model. You can also use, let, let's say I, I'll use a different one model. So let's say from Keras, I'm going for applications and I'm going for inception v3 model. 
and I'm saying import inception v3. So as soon as I say a model 3 equals to inception v3, and if I go, if this weights are not downloaded in your system, it will start downloading this weight. And see here the, the weights are downloading in the specific folders which is in users.keras and in that you have all the models downloaded. I'm starting making it right now because I don't need this model right away. I'm stopping uh, the execution of this. Hope you understand this. We'll continue this code in the, the next like, uh, video session. Thank you. Hello, let's continue our session on pre-training model with coding. Now, in the above, in the previous example, what we saw is we have our own images, but the classes were of the existing pre-trained model. Now, in this section, what we will do is we will train this model, ImageNet model, with our data set. So let's say what data set I'll use is four class data set initially. This four class data set zip file is with you and it's basically having a cat, 25 images of cat, 25 images of dog, 25 images of human and 25 images of horse. This is what we want to do. So it, it's only having 100 images, 25 for each category. We will train the model each. So our last layer, which was initially having 1000 classes will now only have Four classes. This is what we want to do. We want to leave the entire section of the above model as it is. We want to change this last dense layer model only. But before doing that, what we will do is we need to convert this image data into appropriate uh, data set uh, numpy array to feed into the model. So let's get started. The, the things that I'll need initially is Let's say I have a data underscore. I'm, I'm creating a data path. And let's say that data path is now right now F column four class. This is where my data is. Okay. And it's actually in four class slash slash data section. No, it's directly, so it's not in a data section, it's directly available. And in that all the directories are there. Each directory is like cat is a directory, dog is a directory and in that the cat are there. So first I need to get the all the directories. So I'm saying os dot list dir means i'm getting all the directories of the data underscore path so it's actually four directories so let's say if i say print data underscore dir underscore list so you can see it's listing four directories are there in the folder four classes once this is done i'm creating an image list i'm creating actually an image data list which will having the all the data initially it's empty and i will iterate each image from the directory so what i'll do is for the data set I'm saying in data DIR list. So it has five directories. It is having the four directories and I'm saying image underscore list is actually OS dot again list directory. Uh, 
and I'm fetching uh, path. So I need a data path, data underscore path, this data underscore because I need a proper path of an image. So I'm saying it's double slash plus data set. So what it's actually doing is it's converting the folder F, uh, the data set will have a cat, dog, horse and this. So it's actually converting into F colon slash four classes slash cat and then slash dog. And likewise, so it's getting all the uh, image list directories. And from each of this direct files, I am saying uh, let's convert it into the proper image numpy array. Uh, if you have a doubt, let, let's see, I'll see what it's displaying image underscore list before doing this. You can see it's getting all the images, all the images, dog one, dog two, dog three, dog three, and likewise, and horse, horse, horse. And before that, it's cat, 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 cat. Because unless this full path is not made, it will not retrieve this file. If I only write data set, it will not get all this file. Now I want to read each of this file. So from the image list, each file will come into an IMG. And then what we did in the above section, similar things we will do. So I'm creating an image path, which is again is this data path. And then finally, IMG. So now it's full path of the image. It's not only cat one, it's not only a cat one dot JPG, but it's F colon slash four classes slash cat slash cat one dot JPG. This is what this path got. And then again, what we'll do is we'll convert it into, we are loading this image. And again, we will give the target size as our pre-trained model size, uh, 224. And then I'm saying image to image. Image array and I'm converting into IMG into X and again expanding X, pre-processing X expanding it and then pre-processing it and finally this is one image so I am adding this image into the data list So now image list will have all the image and finally this image data which we have uh, sorry the all the image we have we want to convert it into an umpire data so this is what it will do and let's say I'm printing what this image underscore data is. So once we execute it, you can see it's converting all this data into a specific format. Now, let me display the shape of this, what the shape is, because we need a proper shape. So its shape is 100 images and each one is having this format. Now we don't need this one because uh, our data size will be 100 images of 224 cross 224 cross 3. So now I'm rolling it. So image data is np dot roll axis and I'm saying it's an image data.
Now if I display it, you see we, we have rolled image, uh, rolled the index, we have rolled it like this, 1 and 0 indexes. And then I am again saying image data is image data of 0. So this all is same value. So once this is done, our image size is now uh, data set is converted into this. So we got the actual shape. Now we don't know what this label is all about because this is only data. We have gathered all the data. So now we have to give the labels also. So to do that, I am saying there are basically four classes. This we will need later stage. And number of samples. How many samples are there? 100. So I can say 100. And the labels I will give is np dot. Right now once I am creating a once. That is 100 once I am creating. And the data type that I am using is in 64 because we need to create an label classes also and then I'm saying initially now if I say print labels it's all 100 ones we, we don't want to do that we want to say that labels from 0 to 24 25 excluding 25 so it's 0 to 24 is 0 label 0 is our cat then dog and then human horse and then human horse and then human you will find it over here it's basically taking it into the sorry instead of human it's a rider so it's it's taking this sequentially cat, dog, horse and human. So then I am saying from 25 including 25 to 50 my class 1 and then class 2 and then class 3. So it's from 50 to 75 and from 75 to 100 all these three. And let's say I am giving names also. So names is, I'm giving just the name, names of the label cats. I can have any names over here, dogs. And then it's horses. And then finally it's, let's say human instead of writers, I'm saying human. The name of the file doesn't matter, it's just a data. So once this is done, we created a names of the label. Now I need to convert it into a one hot hand coding. So for that I'll use uh, the Keras utility. So for that what I'm doing is from Keras utils import np underscore utils. This actually is used for converting our labels into one hot hand coding. So let's say I'm saying y is y is our target classes now. So y is np utils, and I'm converting it to to categorical. There is one hot encoding. I'm saying labels need to convert it, and the number of classes are four. So once I do this. We have a Y which is having a one chord encoding base targets. So this 0, 0, 0 and 1 is my last class, 25. Then it will be the third class, second class and finally the first class. So it's this is called one hot encoding. If you have a problem in understanding one hot encoding, please go into some sections where you can easily find out one hard encoding. Now, our X is in this sequence, uh, our our data that is image underscore data list, this is in the sequence that is first 25 classes is of cat, uh, first 25 data is of cat, then dog and then human, sorry, then horse and then human and similarly Y. So now we need to shuffle it 
to so for shuffling also we will need let's say a shuffle function from np utils so what i'll do is and it's actually the shuffle function is in sklearn so i'm saying from sklearn in utils import shuffle to get to make our data appropriate so what i'm doing is i'm calling a shuffle function i'm saying shuffle my image data as well as my y and i am giving the random state you can give a different random state so once we do this okay shuffle is not found so once we run it now if we display y it's not in a sequence see the data is now shuffle initially it was not shuffled and now let's convert let's convert this our 100 data into train trace split so for that we will need from sklearn again a cross validation to convert into train trace split so this is a class that we will need and i'm saying uh, having x train y train x test y train y test and i am calling train test split i am saying split x and y into train and test splits with test size as 0.2 and i am saying random state as 2 so once we do this our xy which is uh, let's say if i say x dot shape it's 100 data once i run this okay it's saying that this test test split is validated instead of this you have to use model selection we can also do that but it's fine for us and if you see in variable explorer here now we have our x test as 20 record and x train as 80 record similarly our y test and y train is y train is 80 y test is 20 so this is we have converted our data into an appropriate data that we need to feed into our next model we'll continue building a model in the next section Hello let's continue our course on transfer learning in this section we are going to modify the existing resnet model to train for our four class model that our four class are cat dog horse and human so let's see first what is this resnet model is all about so model 2 dot summary if i display you can see it is having a last layer as dense layer and it is having 1000 classes so instead of this 1000 classes we want our four classes and to do this what i need to do is what uh, this after this average pooling we have this flatten layer so after this average pooling we will add our flatten layer uh, having 2048 data so to do that first of all uh i'll say let's say the layer that i i want to i am interested in is a average pooling so model dot get layer now what is this model so it's in from keras dot models import and this is not that we want model 2 dot get layer which layer we want is average pooling layer avg underscore pool layer 
this one this layer we want so avg underscore pole layer an output of that we want what is an output of that 2048 no so I got the AVG pull layer and that is in that now I am adding a layer flatten layer flatten layer and the name of the layer that is I am giving is name is flatten from the last layer and again this flatten is not there so we have to get all these layers different layers so let's say from keras dot layers import flatten we also need dense layer so we are also adding a dense so once uh, this flatten layer is added our final is a dense layer he, right now it has 1000 uh, neurons as an output you can say we want only four so that four is uh, stored in our number of classes we have four num classes as number of classes four the function that for activation we are using is a softmax layer and the name of the output layer is that I'm giving is output layer. You can give any name here. And that I want to add into an X. Once I done, I did this. So I have now three layers, this last layer, which is having the all above layers. X, after that I have added to the last layer, I have added an X that is flatten layer. and Behind X, I have added a dense layer with four as an output. Now I'm, I want to create a custom model based on this. So this custom model will take some input. Our output is fixed, this. So we need to define what an input it will take. So to do that, let's say I'm saying from keras.layers import input and I'm saying image input as input and the shape of my input is what? Our shape of input is 224 cross 3. This is my input size. So we have an input defined, an output defined. So now let's build the model. So say my custom model is and rather it's against a custom ResNet model is model this is the class we are using model and in that I need to define inputs as image underscore input and outputs as out once I do this and then I'm saying custom let's see this okay so it's saying that the following previous layers were accessed without issue this meaning that it has uh, the The top layer was not included, so I need to change slightly this model 2. So I'm saying model 2 is equal to ResNet 50. And in that I'm saying input tensor is equal to image underscore input. So I need to take this value over here because I need to define the input tensor that I'm giving. Input tensor and I'm saying include top as true and I'm using weights. Here also you can define weights also image net weight. That is my model 2. 
because input tensor was not defined. This is it's having an error list. So we are now defining because when we created a ResNet above here, we created a default ResNet without an input tensor. Once this is done, I can say this and then this and then this. So now the model is built and now I can display what is it having dot. summary so if you see summary it is having four and then two twenty two zero four eight from here we have changed to this and this and if i display model two dot summary you have one thousand last layer and for our cases we have four only now, once this model is built, we need to compile this model. So let's say I'm saying custom ResNet model is equal to custom ResNet model dot compile. Sorry, it's it's not needed to have any equal to sign. So we are just compiling it, yeah, right? So we are saying compile. Now here, uh, you should know what the loss is and what sort of a loss. So I'm saying categorical cross entropy loss we are using. And the optimizer you can use maybe Adam or RMS prop. Let's say I'm using RMS prop as an optimizer. Uh, other parameters that also needed are accuracy, that is matrix, which matrix we, we are going to use. So it's matrix equal to accuracy let's say and now once this is done we need to fit this model and that is let's say Custom ResNet model dot fit and we will fit it on X underscore train and Y underscore train the batch size which we will give could be let's say 20 record at a time the number of epochs let's say I, I'm going to use is 20 you can have more epochs also let's say 40 epochs and verbose is the detail that we want to display and we want to do a validation based on accuracy and loss so this is what we are okay sorry the validation data is validation data is x underscore test and y underscore test and in the next video we will compile will fit this model because it may take some time thank you uh, hello and uh, let's continue our model. So in the previous video, what we did is we, we take a Rens, uh, ResNet model. We extracted its average pooling layer its output that is flattened layer. We added the flattened layer in that in the uh, average pooling layers. And then finally, behind that, we have added our dense layer with four classes and the activation function is softmax layer. and the name of the layer we have given an output layer so if you see the summary we we have already seen it in previous model but it's for better understanding so output is 4 
Now we, we need to compile this model. So we are checking what uh, loss we will use to update the weights. The optimizer, the, we are using Adam as prop. We can also use Adam. And the matrix that I'm using is an accuracy matrix. And then finally, uh, we, we, we want to fit this model on train data. We are taking batch size 20, epoch 40. Uh, right now for, so now let's run this code. So now as soon as we compile the model and start it uh, fitting the model, it will show us an epoch based accuracy. So batch size is actually a 20. We, we will uh, see some output layers uh, later in this. As right now, I'm not running it on the GPU. The execution process is slightly slow here. So here right now, you can see the loss is 1.73 and the accuracy is 0 0.15. So here you can see the accuracy is now 38% in the first epoch itself. In the second epoch you can see the accuracy has increased to 65% and that is, that is training accuracy. And in, in the previous epoch, the validation accuracy was about 25%. So once this all the epochs, that is 40 epochs completes, its accuracy will increase definitely. So I'm just stopping this layer and I'll show you the end results after completing all this training. Hi, let's continue our course and in this section we are going to see a full demo of a cat dog classifier. So first of all what is a cat dog classifier is that on a Kaggle you can find a cat dog data set which has 25,000 images of cats and dog. In the resource section you can find, download a training.zip file which is shown over here, training.zip file from the resource section and it is having uh, 25,000 images of cat and dogs. In this section, in this particular video section, we'll be preparing our data set. So if you see, uh, if you unzip this training.zip file, you will get the code like you will see the 25,000 images as different cat and dogs folders are given. So it is having a huge list. Okay. And uh, first, our data set. So in, in, in this, what we will do is we'll, first we will get the list of all these files because we have to load this file also. So I'll be needing a globe and I'll also need to convert this image is into numpy array so I'll need numpy and this. Now let's iterate to this. I'm taking from the globe um, Extracting train folder and from that all the files. Once this is done, what I want is I want all the cat files into the cat file list, and for that I'm saying is for cat fn for fn in files in files, and what this file contain it should have a cat as a data in it. So what it will do is that it will find all the files which is having cat as a file name and it will put into 
cat file name once uh, this is done similarly we do it for doc files so what we want is all doc files list to make from if it is having a dog so what it does is that for each it will take each file from each folder it is assigned it to dog fn and if dog fn has dog in it it will put into this list and it finally becomes the list so this list has all the files which is having a dog as a name in the file name because if you see the the name start with cat and dogs like this now let's say i'm saying uh, cat uh, training data i want to create so i'm saying cat train and now i want a random some data from this to train my model so i'm saying random and i'm using choice uh, it will take randomly files from cat files and let's say the size of the training set i want to create is 2000 so i want random 2000 files listing names only and i'm saying replace equal to false because i want a unique data so it it will take one file from the cat file list and it will not replace it back so it will be all unique files in the names in the cat trains similarly for that doc trains also and the list which i got from this cat files so i need to remove a list of cat trains because tra train files i have already picked so cat files minus cat train so it will remove all the chosen file or the cat train database from the cat files and now you have updated cat file list which is minus 2000 from the actual similarly i am doing for doc files so this is my training data 2000 images of cat and dogs now i need to create a validation uh, files also which will check which will be validated by our model whether we are on the our model is trained properly or not if it's not overfitting so similar thing i'll do it for cat validation cat validation and now let's say i'll only take 5000 500 images for validation purpose and again once i have taken this images again i'll remove this samples from actual cat files and cat doc files repository and this validation testing is done in training period and finally i need to test these files though if you see the data set on kaggle you will find that there is a separate test.zip file available but right now i'm not utilizing it i'll only be doing i'll be using from the same 25000 files i'll be using for training validation and similarly for testing so for testing also i need to do the same process so cat testing dog testing again from this 500 files again from this 500 files and i'll remove this so what basically we are doing is from 25000 images we are taking 2000 4000 images of cat and dog for training 1000 images for validation testing and 1000 images for training uh, testing analysis 
Now, this is just a list of files. Now, what I need to do is I need to put this fold files in separate folders as training data or, and validation data and testing data. So let's say I am creating a training directory as train data test directory as test underscore data and validation directory as well underscore data or I, let me get validation data. I want to create these three folders. And my training files is now I want to concat these two sections that is cat train and dog train. So this train files has all the training data. Similarly, validation files as np dot concatenating. I am concatenating two lists that is cat well and dog well. And finally, I have test files, which is np.concat, it is cat test, doc test. As it validation, uh, this concatenation is done, let's say using, having imported the OS, let's say, oh yes, OS is imported. So I, I will make a directory using os.make directory. And let's say make train dir. I'm checking if if not os dot path if the directory is not there then make it. Similarly, we'll do it for validation and testing. So, validation directory, test directory, and finally, after this directory, I want to copy all these files into separate individual folders. So I'm saying for files in train underscore files. This this only has names, so we need to copy it. So for that, I'll use such utility. That is, let's import sh util. And I'm saying sh util dot copy files that I will name file only file into train dir folder. Similarly, I'll copy validation file and test files into validation directory and test directory it's actually a validation files uh, this is the name of this concatenated file so this is done after executing this code what will happen is that 4000 file will be in train data folder train underscore data folder 1000 file in test data folder then 1000 file in validation data folder out of 25,000 files in that folder. So let's execute this code. Uh, let's execute it one by one so we, we have some idea what, what's happening. So if you see over here, let's see, we got cat files and Dot files okay right now it's giving zero here it's giving zero because maybe the path is not set so let's see what is the current directory was dot 
get directory or get working. So it's somewhere else. So I need to make the proper path and to do this proper path making, let's say right now I am Udemy transfer learning and dot get data set. So this is my set path, let's say. Let's uh, change the directory. To the path where this tech cat docs folders are there. So this cat doc folders are So right now, I need to give it two slashes. Once this path is set, now let's execute it again. Because what was happening is this train folder was not there. Let me add this file. So now you can see 12,500 files in cat and 12,500 files in doc folders. Then we are creating cat train, doc train, 2000 files in each. We are splitting. So now our cat files folder is reduced. 2000 is removed from this and 2000 is removed from this. We have 10,500. Again, we'll get 500 files from each and again, we'll do minus. So now we have 10,000 files in cat files and that 500 files separate over here. Similarly, we'll do it for test files. Now this process slightly takes longer time here. We are making directories. And then finally copying this individual files into specific folders. So once these files are copied, this train folder. So here if we go in train folder. Docket folder, we have had train folders. Now we have test data, train data, that is this train data, test data, and validation data. Test data, train data, and validation data. These are our three files. This was a previous execution which was, was doing the training, uh, testing. Uh, so once this file are copied, we have our partial data preparation ready. In the next section, we'll do the further reading of uh, this images and converting into NumPy array. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy this session. Hello friends. Let's continue our transfer learning for dog cat classifier. In the previous section, we prepared a partial data set. That is, we have copied 4,000 file from uh, train folders into train data and 1000 file into test data and 1000 file into validation underscore data folders. Now we'll read these files and convert it into NumPy array. So to do that, I'll need from Keras preprocessing image, I need to import load image, image to array, array to image these three things now let's say the dimensions of my image will be 150 cross 150 the image that i'm going to read and 
let's say I'll first read the train files. So glow from glow. Now we want a train underscore data folders. And from that I want to read all the files. So train files will have all the file names in training data folder that were actually 4000 files 4000 files of cat and dogs total and now let's say i want to load this into train images array so what i need to do is for img in train files so it will take one files from this and assign it to img and i want to load this image so load image img with target size as dimension given so i have loaded this file and I want to convert this loaded data into an array. So image to array, this image to. So the ima one image will be taken, it will be loaded and this loaded pixel value will be converted into image array and that is assigned into training image list. So all the images will read and its array is put into this list train images and finally I want to convert this train images array into actual numpy array so I'm saying image train images let's execute it uh, before let's say do it for similarly for testing uh, Control C, Control V. Let's execute this three lines first. So once we do it, it will take some time. And till this point when it's executing, let's convert our data into, let's read our test data folder. Assign it name test files, test images, test images, and files and finally we have our validation file in folder validation data it's in validation image list and here also in validation files globe so it will read 4000 files into convert it into 50, uh, 150 cross 150 images load this images convert it into image to array and then it will convert it into numpy array Now this is we have prepared a test image, train image and validation image yet the label is not there. So for every file we should have a label also. So to do that to prepare for individual like if, if I have read cat files so its label is cat. So I need to give this labels also so let's say train labels is actually we are splitting let's say it with a slash so training data slash cat files and that we are taking the first value so that is cat fold dog like this and then we are again splitting it with dot because all the files has cat dot zero dot something like this see cat dot this so when i'm splitting with dot so the first index will be the title 
cat dog so first index is cat second uh, at second index 4 will be there and third index jpg will be there so we want to find it first index when i split with 0 when i sorry when i split with dot and if i take 0 i'll get cat or a dog as a names and i am stripping it so that no extra characters are there and this i am doing for each file in train files see this is executed so if i say train underscore images dot shape you can see there are 4000 images with 50 150 cross 150 and three channels okay and now we'll do this labeling also okay so there is something missing over here okay the end bracket is not there this is square bracket once we did this if i see train labels you can see that 4000 labels cat 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 and dog for the others similar i need to do it for validation and testing so validation underscore labels and test underscore label for validation files and similarly for test files and to execute this also similarly this also and once this is done we have prepared our labels and data now we will create a encoding also of uh, one hot encoding uh, if you have any doubt on understanding one hot encoding please see the articles on net for one code encoding hello let's continue our talk cat classifier and in this section first we will convert our images to 0 1 in the range of 0 1 to scale it because a deep learning model works better in the smaller values that is in the range of 0 to 1 so the actually what we are doing is we are creating uh, from the train images one more variable name scaled and its type is float 32 and then we are dividing all the values of that well, uh, images pixel by 255 to convert it into range of 0 to 1. So basically what this line is doing is it's taking a train images data and storing it into scale folder and then finally we are dividing scale uh, variable in, in by 255 to make it uh, in the range of 0 to 1. So once we do this, once we execute this code and then if I display it, you can see this is our train image file and to display it, what we are doing is now we are using array to image. So using array to image, we are showing this cat files and similarly if you should see the scaled image, uh, This is a cat, so no difference, only the pixel values is converted into 0 to 1 range. Similarly, I can use any index to see how, let's say, beyond 2000. So 2050, if I do, and if I display it, it will be some dog. Okay, so this is, we got it. Now, we have, if you see the encoders, train labels encoder, it's cat, 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 dog, 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 it's like this. So actually what we want is, because machine learning works on numbers, so instead of this cat value on zero, and for dog we want one, and if, if it has other classes, then different label encoding. So for that we will use a label encoder. So for that again we will use sklearn.preprocessing and we'll use 
label encoder. Actually, what the label encoder does is that it takes uh, the array, I mean, it means the uh, NumPy array, and from the, the list, it takes the list, and from the list, it finds out unique values, and it assigns it to... So we have created a label encoder. We are fitting it, so it's checking which are the unique value, and then finally, What we are doing is we are transforming all the labels of all the labels of train labels into 101 format and putting it into the variable train labels encoding. So if I run this code, we'll get one more variable. Now here you can see it's having zero for cat and one for dog. Initially it was Cat, 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 and dog, 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 dog. So this encoder is created, then we are fitting. This fitting, what it will do is find out unique values and assign a code for it. And then we are iterating this train labels and assign, creating a new variable. Similarly, I have to do it for validation, well file encoder. And again, I'll use le.transform only because it only knows that cat is zero and that is one and for this is for this labelings well labels so now we have validation encoder again it is having this all data once uh, this is done our data is ready. We have read the data into the scaled data into the strain image scaled, validation image scaled, and our labels are in this section. So in the next phase, we'll create a CNN models and C executions. Hello, let's continue our cat dog classifier. And in this section, we'll build our first CNN model basic CNN model. So to do that, we will need the layers, various uh, CNN layers, convolutional layer, max pooling, flat and dense, and maybe drop out in the next model. Uh, we'll also need a sequential model. And in the second model, this is our base model. And in the second model, we'll need the optimizer as well as the, uh, sorry, dropout regularization. So in this model, you can see we have a convolutional layers and then a max pooling layer, then the convolutional layer, then max pooling. So basically we have three convolutional layers. And finally we have a flatten layer, which flattens the uh, features. And we have finally a dense layer and one more dense layer to do a binary classification because we, we only have a dog and a cat. So we are using sigmoid classifier. And uh, for compilation of this model, we are using binary cross entropy again binary for as we have dog and cat classifier only. The optimizer that we are using is RMS prop. You can also use Adam. Okay, and the matrix that we need for evaluation of our uh, model is accuracy. And finally, we are displaying the summary. So let's see what basically this model is offering. So this is what we are doing. We have last one layer that is zero or one. We have all the parameters trainable. And now let's fit this model. So let's say I'm saying history is model dot fit. I am fitting the model. So to fit this model, what we need is we are saying x is equal to train images and that is also scaled images. That is our x and our y is trained labeled images. That is trained files encoding, files and encodes. That is our encoding values. The other thing that we need is our validation data. 
validation underscore data is equal to again we have validation sorry let's see what's the name that is well image scaled and Wells file encode. This is the name. There is some mistake. Uh, it's better to put S over here and S over here. So, so files and for consistency. So this is our encoding, and we have files. Well, files encodes. So this is used for calculating validation accuracy. The batch size that we will use is, let's say, what is our batch size? We have 2000 images. So let's say we will use a batch size of 25, 4000 images. So we'll use a batch size of 25. And uh, number of epochs that may vary, let's say epochs. Let's say I'm considering 20 only right now. And verbose is one. And now we'll fit our model. So it may take some time. Okay, so there is some mistake over here. That is input array should have the same number of samples as target arrays. And found 400 input samples and target samples are less. So it's saying that target leg bullying. Okay, so let me see. Train image scaled. What is train image scale shape? Train dot shape. And train Why is encoding shape 4000? This is right. Similarly, let's see validation files encoding. Oh, it's, it should be 2000. Let's see what, what's the problem. And image, well, underscore image, underscore. scaled oh it's showing 4000 it should be 2000 so okay so what happened is as i run it uh, previously also so there was 2000 uh, the images were there, 1000 images, and, and as I run it multiple times, the array size keep on increasing. So if you run it from scratch, there won't be any problem. Let me uh, resolve this issue by running this code again by removing uh, these variables. So if you see, we can Let's say remove all these very items and again build the model from scratch. So I'll be showing you from that. Okay, so now I have uh, again executed it by removing all these variables again. So from scratch, if you see uh, the validation image scale, it's 4000. It's saying 4000 again. There is a problem. Let's see. Validation scale. I think I haven't changed the variable name. Uh, so, well, images is 4000. Well, images is 4000. 
So this is where the error is there. So I need to make it val images. And then it's all fine. So now I'll again execute this section. So it's loading all these images and again putting in the value images. So now it should change to 1000 because I have, when I copied it, it didn't change this section. So now you can see it's 1000. Now I have to do the scaling also. Let's execute it again. So again I'm executing. So there's also now 1000 and finally I'm doing encoding labels and now let's execute our fit model. So now it's started the compilation. Once this is over, I'll show you the accuracy and similar things involved in it. Thank you very much. Hi. Let's continue our second uh, with our second model by adding few dropouts. So again, what we are doing is we have an input shape of 150 cross 150 in three channel. Okay. So now again, I'm working on my model. Next model, which is having few dropout layers. So uh, above all, uh, this is same. This everything is same except we have added a dropout of 0.3. So once adding this, uh, once added this dropout and again doing, now here again I have used RMS prop, I can use Adam also. And finally, I want to fit this model so I want to fit it I'll store this into history one and say everything is same now I'll execute it and we'll see some changes into the execution uh, we'll discuss the accuracy aspect in the other video thank you very much